For those of you who do not know what My Immortal is, it is, in short, and most accurately, completely retarded. My Immortal is a very loose Harry Potter fanfiction story about Ebony, or Anubi, Darkness, Dementia, Raven, Way, a gothic teenage vampire girl who attends Hogwarts school. To say any more may spoil the lols. The story is infamous for its horrible abuse to the English language and extreme gothic attitude. And now, what you came for. Chapter 1. Author's Note. Special fangs. Get it? Cause I'm gothic. To my GF. Ew, not in that way. Raven Bloody Tears 666 for helping me with Dastori and spelling. You rock. Justin, you're the love of my depressing life. You rock too. My chemical romance rocks. XXXX. Hi! My name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way, and I have long ebony black hair. That's how I got my name. With purple streaks and red tips that reaches my mid back, and icy blue eyes like limpid tears, and a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. Author's note, if you don't know who she is, get the hell out of here! I'm not related to Gerard Way, but I wish I was, because he's a major fucking hottie. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin. I'm also a witch, and I go to a magic school called Hogwarts in England, where I'm in the seventh year. I'm 17. I'm a goth, in case you couldn't tell, and I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic, and I buy all my clothes from there. For example, today, I was wearing a black corset, with matching lace around it, and a black leather miniskirt, pink fishnets, and black combat boots. I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. I was walking outside Hogwarts. It was snowing and raining, so there was no sun, which I was very happy about. A lot of preps stared at me. I put up my middle finger at them. Hey, Ebony! shouted a voice. I looked up. It was Draco Malfoy. What's up, Draco? I asked. Nothing, he said shyly. But then I heard my friends call me, and I had to go away. Author's note. Is it good? Please tell me, thanks. No! Chapter 2 Author's Note Thanks to Bloody Tears 666 for helping me with that chapter. By the way, preps, stop flaming my story, okay? The next day, I woke up in my bedroom. It was snowing and raining again. I opened the door of my coffin and drank some blood from a bottle I had. My coffin was black ebony and inside it was hot pink velvet with black lace on the ends. I got out of my coffin and took off my giant MCR t-shirt which I used for pyjamas. Instead I put on a black leather dress, a pentagram necklace, combat boots and black fishnets on. I put on four pairs of earrings in my pierced ears and put my hair in a kind of messy bun. My friend Willow, author's note, Raven, this is you, woke up then and grinned at me. She flipped her long, waist-length raven black hair with pink streaks and opened her forest green eyes. She put in her Marilyn Manson t-shirt with a black mini, fishnets, and pointed high heel boots. We put on our makeup, black lipstick, white foundation, and black eyeliner. OMFG! I saw you talking to Draco Malfoy yesterday! She said excitedly. Yeah? So? I said, blushing. Do you like Draco? She asked as she went out of the slivering common room and into the great hall. No, I so fucking don't, I shouted. You're right, she exclaimed. Just then, Draco walked up to me. Hoi, he said. Hi, I replied flirtily. Guess what, he said. What, I asked. Well, good Charlotte are having a concert in Hogsmeade. He told me. Oh my fucking god! I screamed. I love GC. 
They are my favorite band, besides MCR. Well, do you want to go with me? He asked. I gasped. Chapter 3. Author's note. Stop flaming the story, preps, okay? Otherwise, thanks to the gothic people for the good reviews. Thanks again, Raven. Oh yeah, by the way, I don't own this or that lyrics for Good Charlotte. On the night of the concert, I put on my black lace-up boots with high heels. Underneath them were ripped red fishnets. Then I put on a black leather mini dress with all this corset stuff on the back and front. I put on matching fishnets on my arms. I straightened my hair and made it look all spiky. I felt a little depressed then, so I slit one of my wrists. I read a depressing book while I waited for it to stop bleeding, and I listened to some GC. I painted my nails black and put on tons of black eyeliner. Then I put on some black lipstick. I didn't put on foundation because I was pale anyway. I drank some human blood so I was ready to go to the concert. I went outside. Draco was waiting there in front of his flying car. He was wearing a simple plan t-shirt. They would play at the show too. Baggy black skater pants, black nail polish, and a little eyeliner. Author's note, a lot of cool boys wear it, okay? Hi, Draco, I said in a depressed voice. Hi, Ebony, he said back. We walked into his flying black Mercedes Benz. The license plate said 666 and flew to the place with the concert. On the way, we listened excitedly to Good Charlotte and Marilyn Manson. We both smoked cigarettes and drugs. When we got there, we both hopped out of the car. We went to the mosh pit at the front of the stage and jumped up and down as we listened to Good Charlotte. You come in cold, you're covered in blood. They're all so happy you've arrived. The daughter cuts your cord, as do your mum. She sets you free into this life. Zang Joel, I don't own the lyrics to that song. Joel is so fucking hot, I said to Draco, pointing to him as he sung, filling the club with his amazing voice. Suddenly, Draco looked sad. What's wrong? I asked as we moshed the music. Then I caught on. Hey, it's okay. I don't like him better than you, I said. Really? Asked Draco sensitively, and he put his arm around me, all protective. Really? I said. Besides, I don't even know Joel, and he's going out with Hillary fucking Duff. I fucking hate that little bitch. I said, disgustingly, thinking of her ugly blonde face. The night went on really well, and I had a great time. So did Draco. After the concert, we drank some beer, and asked Benji and Joel for their autographs and photos with them. We got GC concert tees. Draco and I crawled back into the Mercedes Benz, but Draco didn't go back to Hogwarts. Instead, he drove the car into the Forbidden Forest. Chapter 4. Author's note. I said, stop flaming, okay? Everybody's name is Anobi, not Mary Sue, okay? Draco is so in love with her that he is acting different. They knew each other before, okay? Draco! I shouted. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Draco didn't answer, but he stopped the flying car and he walked out of it. I walked out of it too, curiously. What the fucking hell? I asked, angrily. Ebony? He asked. What? I snapped. Draco leaned in, extra close, and I looked into his gothic red eyes. He was wearing colour contacts, which revealed so much depressing sorrow and evilness, and then suddenly I didn't feel mad anymore. And then, suddenly, just as I, Draco kissed me passionately. Draco climbed on top of me, and we started to make out keenly against a tree. He took off my top, and I took off his clothes. I even took off my bra! Then he put his thingy into my, you know what, and we did it for the first time. Oh, oh, oh! I screamed. I was beginning to get an orgasm. We started to kiss everywhere, and my pale body became all warm, and then... WHAT THE HELL ARE YOU DOING, YOU MOTHERFUCKERS?! It was... Uh, Dumbledore! Chapter 5 Orvis Note Stop flaming! If you flame, it means you're a prep or a poser. The only reason Dumbledore swore is because he had a headache. 
okay? And on top of that, he was mad at them for having sex. But yes, I'm not updating until I get five good reviews. Dumbledore made Andreco and I follow him. He kept shouting at us angrily. You ludicrous fools! He shouted. I started to cry tears of blood down my pallid face. Draco comforted me. When we went back to the castle, Dumbledore took us to Professor Snape and Professor McGoogle, who were both looking very angry. They were having sexual intercourse in the Forbidden Forest! He yelled in a furious voice. Why did you do such a thing, you mediocre dunces? Asked Professor McGoogle. How dare you? Demanded Professor Snape. And then Draco shrieked, Because I love her. Everyone was quiet. Dumbledore and Professor Mugul still looked mad, but Professor Snape said, Fine, very well, you may go up to your rooms. Draco and I went upstairs while the teachers glared at us. Are you okay, Ebony? Draco asked me gently. Yeah, I guess, I lied. I went to the girls' dorm and brushed my teeth and my hair and changed into a low-cut black floor left dress with red lace all around it and black high heels when I came out. Draco was standing in front of the bathroom and he started to sing I Just Want to Live by Good Charlotte. I was so flattered even though he wasn't supposed to be there. We hugged and kissed. After that we said goodnight and he reluctantly went back to his room. Chapter 6 Author's Note Shut up preps, okay? P.S. I won't update until you give me good reviews. The next day, I woke up in my coffin. I put on a black mini skirt that was all ripped around the end, and a matching top with red skulls all over it, and high heeled boots that were black. I put on two pairs of skull earrings, and two crosses in my ears. I spray painted my hair with purple. In the Great Hall, I ate some Count Chocola cereal with blood instead of milk, and a glass of red blood. Suddenly, someone bumped into me. All the blood spilled over my top. Bastard! I shouted angrily. I regretted saying it when I looked up because I was looking into the pale white face of a gothic boy with spiky black hair with red streaks in it. He was wearing so much eyeliner that I was going down his face and he was wearing black lipstick. He didn't have glasses anymore and now he was wearing red contact lenses just like Draco's and there was no scar on his forehead anymore. He had a manly stubble on his chin. He had a sexy English accent. He looked exactly like Joel Madden. He was so sexy that my body went all hot when I saw him. Kind of like an erection, only I'm a girl. So I didn't get one, you sicko. I'm so sorry, he said in a shy voice. That's alright. What's your name? I questioned. My name's Harry Potter, although most people call me Vampire these days, he grumbled. Why? I exclaimed. Because I love the taste of human blood, hee <laughs> hee, he giggled. Well, I am a vampire, I confessed. Really? he whimpered. Yeah, I roared. We sat down to talk for a while. Then Draco came up behind me and told me he had a surprise for me. So I went away with him. Chapter 7. Bring me to life. Author's note. Well, okay, you guys, I'm only writing this because I got five god reviews. And by the way, I won't write the next chapter till I get ten good forms. Stop flaming or I'll report you. Ebony isn't a Mary Sue, okay? She isn't perfect, she's a Satanist. And she has a problem, she's depressed for good sake. Draco and I held our pale white hands with black nail polish as we went upstairs. I was wearing red Satanic Sings on my nails in red nail polish. Author's note. See, does that sound like a Mary Sue to you? I waved to Vampire. Dark misery was in his depressed eyes. I guess he was jealous of me that I was going out with Draco. Anyway, I went upstairs excitedly with Draco. We went into his room and locked the door. Then, we started Frenching passively, and we took off each other's clothes enthusiastically. He felt me up before I took off my top. Then I took off my black leather bra, and he took off his pants. We went on the bed and started making out naked, and then he put his boys thingy in mine! And we had sex! See? Is that stupid? 
Oh, Draco, Draco! I screamed while getting an orgasm when, all of a sudden, I saw a tattoo I had never seen before on Draco's arm. It was a black heart with an arrow through it. On it, in bloody gothic writing, there were the words, Vampire. I was so angry. You bastard! I shouted angrily, jumping out of the bed. No, no, but you don't understand, Draco pleaded, but I knew too much. No, you fucking idiot! I shouted. You probably have AIDS anyway! I put on my clothes all huffily and then stomped out. Draco ran out even though he was naked. He had a really big you-know-what, but I was too mad to care. I stomped out and did so until I was in Vampire's classroom, where he was having a lesson with Professor Snape and some other people. Vampire Potter! You motherfucker! I yelled. Chapter 8. Orvisnope, stop flashing, okay? If you do, then you are a prep. Everyone in the class stared at me, and then Drago came into the room, even though he was naked, and started begging me to take him back. Ebony, it's not what you think! Draco screamed sadly. My friend Bloody Mary Smith smarted me unstatedly. She flipped her long waist length gothic black hair and opened her crimson eyes like blood that she was wearing contact lenses on. She had pale white skin that she was wearing white makeup on. Hermione was kidnapped when she was born. Her real parents are vampires. And one of them is a witch. Her father killed her mother and her father committed suicide because he was depressed about it. She still has nightmares about it and she is very haunted and depressed. It also turns out her real last name is Smith, and not Granger. Since she has converted to Satanism, she is in Slytherin now, not Gryffindor. What is it you desire, you ridiculous dimwit? Snape demeaned angrily in his cold voice, but I ignored him. Vampire! I can't believe you cheated on me with Draco! I shouted at him. Everyone gasped. I don't know why Ebony was so mad at me. I had went out with Vampire, I'm by and so is Ebony, for a while, but then he broke my heart. He dumped me because he liked Brittany, a stupid preppy fucker. We were just good friends now. He had gone through horrible problems and now he was gothic. Haha, <laughs> like I would hang out with a prep. But I'm not going out with Draco anymore, said Vampire. You're fucking right! Fuck off, you bastard! I screamed. I ran out of the room and into the Forbidden Forest, where I had lost my virility to Draco, and then I started to bust into tears. Chapter 9. Author's note, stop flaming, okay? I didn't read all the boxes. This is from the movie, okay, so it's not my fault if double all swears. Besides, I said he had a headache, and the reason Snap doesn't lick Harry now is because he's Christian, and Vampire is a Satanist. MCR rocks. I was so mad and sad. I couldn't believe Draco for cheating on me. I began to cry against the tree where I did it with Draco. Then all of a sudden, a horrible man with red eyes and no nose and everything started flying towards me on a broomstick. He didn't have a nose, basically like Voldemort in the movie, and he was wearing all black but it was obvious he wasn't gothic. It was Voldemort! No! I shouted at the scared voice, but then Voldemort shouted, Imperious! And I couldn't run away. Crookshanks! I shouted at him. Voldemort fell off his broom and started to scream. I felt bad for him, even though I'm a Satanist, so I stopped. Ebony! He yelled. Thou must kill Vampire Potter! I thought about Vampire and his sexy eyes, and his gothic black hair, and how his face looks just like John Madden. I remember that Draco had said that I didn't understand, so I thought... What if Draco went out with Vampire before I went out with him and they broke up? No, Voldemort! I shouted back. Voldemort gave me a gun. No, please! I begged. Thou must! He yelled. If thou dost not, then I shall kill thy beloved Draco. How did you know? I asked in a surprised way. Voldemort got a dude you're so retarded look on his face. I have. Telekinesis! He answered cruelly. And if you do not kill Vampire, then now know what will happen to Draco, he shouted. Then he flew away angrily on his broomstick. I was so scared and mad I didn't know what to do. Suddenly, Draco came into the woods. Draco, I said. Hi. Hi, he said back, but his face is all sad. He was wearing white foundation and messy eyeliner, kind of like a pentagram. 
get it, between John Madden and Gerard Way. Are you okay? I asked. No, he answered. I'm sorry I got all mad at you, but I thought you cheated on me. I expelled. That's okay, he said, all depressed. And we went back into Hogwarts together, making out. Chapter 10. Orvis note. Stop it, you gay fags. If you don't like my story, then fuck off. P.S. It turns out Bloody Mary isn't a muggle. I flirt her, she's a vampire. And the evil debts, they movie houses, okay? Okay. I was really scared about Voldemort all day. I was even upset, went to rehearsals with my gothic metal band, Bloody Gothic Rose 666. I am the lead singer of it, and I play guitar. People say that we sound like a cross between GC, Slipknot, and MCR. The other people in the band are Bloody Mary, Vampire, Draco, Ron, although we call him Diabolo now. <laughs> he has black hair now with blue streaks in it, and Horrorgrid. Only today, Draco and Vampire were depressed, so they weren't coming, and we wrote songs instead. I knew Draco was probably slicking his wrists. He wouldn't die because he was a vampire too, and the only way you can kill a vampire is with a cross. There's no way I'm writing that. Or a stake. And Vampire was probably watching a depressing movie like The Corpse Bride. I put on a black leather shirt that showed off my boobs, a tiny matching miniskirt that said, Simple Plan, on the butt. You might think I'm a slut, but I'm really not. We were singing a cover of Helena, and at the end of the song, I suddenly burst into tears. Ebony, are you okay? Bloody Mary asked in a concerned voice. What the fuck do you think? I asked angrily. And then I said, well, Voldemort came, and the fucking buzzer told me to fucking kill Harry. But I don't want to kill him, because he's really nice, even if he did go out with Draco. But if I don't kill Harry, then Voldemort will fucking kill Draco. I burst into tears. Suddenly, Draco jumped out from behind a wall. Why did you fucking tell me? He shouted. How could you, you, you fucking pose a muggle bitch? See, is that out of character? I started to cry and cry. Draco started to cry too, all sensitive. Then he ran out crying. We practiced for one more hour. Then suddenly Dumbledore walked in angrily. His eyes were all fiery and I knew this time. It wasn't cause he had a headache. What have you done? He started to cry wisely. See, that's basically not swearing and this time he was really upset and you will see why. Ebony Draco has been found in his room. He committed suicide by slitting his wrists. Chapter 11. Orvis note. I said stop flaming you, perhaps. See if this chapter is stupid. It is really with serious issues. SP, see for yourself if it's stupid. By the way, thanks to my friend Raven for helping me. No! I screamed. I was horrified. Bloody Mary tried to comfort me, but I told her, fuck off. And I ran to my room, crying myself. Dumbledore chased after me, shouting, but he had to stop when... I went into my room, cause it would look like a perv that way. Anyway, I started crying tears of blood, and then I slipped both of my wrists. They got all over my clothes, so I took them off and jumped in the bath angrily, while I put on a Lincoln Park song at full volume. I grabbed a steak and almost stuck it into my heart to commit suicide. I was so fucking depressed. I got out of the bathroom and put on a black low-cut dress with lace all over it sandily. I put on black high heels with pink metal stuff on the ends, and six pairs of skull earrings. I couldn't fucking believe it. Then I looked out of the window and screamed. Snap was spying on me, and he was taking a videotape of me. A Lupin was masticated to it. They were sitting on their broomsticks. Ew, you fucking pervs, stop looking at me naked. Are you pedos or what? I screamed, but he got a black towel with a picture of Marilyn Manson on it. Suddenly, Vampire ran in. Abracavara! He yelled at Snape and Lupin, pointing his womb. I took my gun and shot Snap and Lupin a gazillion times, and they both started screaming, and the camera broke. Suddenly, Dumbledore ran in. Everybody! It has been revealed that someone has- yeah! He shouted, looking at Snape and Lupin, and then he waved his wand and suddenly, Hagrid ran outside on his broom and said, Everyone, we need to talk. What do you know, Hagrid? You're just a little Hogwarts student. I may be a local student! Hagrid paused angrily, but I am also a Satanist! This cannot be. 
Snape said in a crisp voice as blood dripped from his hand, where Dumbledore's wand had shot him. There must be other factors. You don't have any! I yelled in, madly. Lupin held up the camera triumphantly. The letter may be ruined, but the tape is still there. I felt faint, more than I normally do, like how it feels when you do not drink enough blood. Why are you doing this? Lupin said angrily, while he rubbed his dirty hands on his cloak. And then I heard the words that I had heard before, but not from him. I did not know whether to feel shocked or unhappy, or to bite him and drink his blood because I felt faint. Back horse! Back horse! Hagrid said as he paused in the air dramatically, waving his wand in the air. Then he swooped in, singing to the tune of a gothic version of a song by 50 Cent. Because you're gothic? Snap asked in a little afraid voice because he was afraid and it meant he was connected with Satan. Because I love her! Chapter 12. Author's note. Stop effing, okay? Hagrid is a pedo too. A lot of people in American schools are like that. I wanted to address the issue. How do you know Snap isn't Christian? Plus, Hagrid isn't really in love with Ebony. Dad was Cedric, okay? I was about to slip my wrist again with the silver knife that Drago had given me in case anything happened to him. He had told me to use it valiantly against an enemy, but I knew that we must both go together. No! I thought it was Hagrid, but it was Vampire. He started to scream. Oh my fucking god! No! Mask off hurts! And then... His eyes rolled up. You could only see his red whites. I stopped. How did you know? I saw it, and um, my scar turned back into the lightning bolt. No! I ran up closer. I thought you didn't have a scar anymore! I shouted. I do, but Diabolo changed it into a pentagram for me, and I always carry it out with foundation, he said back. Anyway, my scar hurt and it turned back into the lightning bolt. Save me! Then I had a vision of what was happening to Draco. Wolfram has him bondage! Anyway... I was in the school nurse's office, now recovering from my said wrists. Snap and Lupin and Harriet were there too. They were going to St. Mango's after they recovered because they were pedophiles. And you can't have those fucking pervs teaching the school with lots of hot girls. Double that had constipated the Cidio camera, they took off me naked. I put up my middle finger at them. Anyway, Hagrid came into my hospital bed holding a bouquet of pink roses. <laughs> I didn't have your talent, he said in a very serious voice, giving me the roses. Fuck off, I told him. You know how I fucking hate the color pink anyway, and I don't like fucked up preps like you, I snapped. Hagrid had been mean to me before for being gothic. No I love me, Hagrid said. Those are not roses! What, are they ghosts too, you poser prep? I asked because I was angry that he had brought me pink roses. I see you alive, he yelled angrily. No, you didn't, I replied. You saved me from getting a Paris Hilton porn video made from your shower scene and being vooed by Snap and Lupin. Who much of it? See, is that spelled wrong? To it, he added, silently. Whatever, I yelled angrily. He pointed his wand at the pink roses. No, not roses! He suddenly looked at them with an evil look in his eye and muttered, <laughs> that's not a spell, that's an MZR song! I corrected him wisely. I know, I was just walking over a vocal horse. Then he screamed. <laughs> for all the cool gothic MZR fans out there, there, that is a tribute. Especially for Raven. I love you, girl. I'm a noto okayo. And then the roses turned into a huge black flame, floating in the middle of the air. And it was black! Now I knew he wasn't a prep. Okay, I believe you. Now what the fuck is Draco? Hagrid rolled his eyes. I looked into the ball of flames, but I could see nothing. You see an army! Double's horse said, watching the two of us, watching the flame. To see what is the flames! Haha, <laughs> you are few as flames, get it? You must find yourself first! Okay? I have found myself your only man! Hagrid yelled. Dumbledore looked shocked. I guess he didn't have a headache or else he would have said something back. Hagrid stormed off back onto his bed. You're a liar, Prof Dumbledore! -y. 
Anyway, when I got better, I went upstairs and put on a black leather mini dress that was all ripped on the ends with lace on it. There was some corset stuff on the front. Then, I put on black fishnets and black high heel boots with pictures of Billy Joe Armstrong on them. I put my hair all around me so I looked like Samara from The Ring. If you don't know who she is, you're a prep, so fuck off! And I put on blood red lipstick, black eyeliner, and black lip gloss. You look why, girl? Bloody Mary said sadly. Thanks! Get it? You do too, I said sadly too, but I was still upset. I slipped both of my wrists feeling totally depressed, and I sucked all the blood. I cried again in my bathroom and put the shades on so Snap and Lupin couldn't spy on me this time. I went to some classes. A vampire was in the hair of magical magic creatures. He looked all depressed because Draco had disappeared, and he had used to be in love with Draco. He was sucking some blood from a Hufflepuff. Hi, he said in a depressed way. Hi back, I said in an equally sad way. We both looked at each other for some time. Harry had beautiful red gothic eyes, so much like Draco's. Then, we jumped on each other and started screwing each other. Stop it now, you horny simpletons! shouted Professor McGoogle, who was watching us, and so was everyone else. Vampire, you fucker! I said, slapping him. Stop trying to screw me! You know I love Draco! I shouted, and then I ran away angrily. Just then, he started to scream. Oh my fucking god! No! My scar hurts! And then... His eyes rolled up. You could only see his red whites. No! I ran up closer. I thought you didn't have a scar anymore! I shouted. I do, but Diabolo changed it into a pentagram for me, and I always cover it up with foundation, he said back. Anyway, my scar hurt, and then I had a vision of what was happening to Draco. Voldemort has him bondage! Special thanks to Raven, my gothic blood sister. W2F, are you supposed to do with this? Hey Raven, do you know where my sweater is? Chapter 13. Office note. Raven, thanks for getting me help again. I'm sorry I took your poster of Gerard, but that guy is such a fucking sex bomb. Preps, stop flaming! Vampire and I ran up the stairs, looking for Dumbledore. We were so scared. Dumbledore! Dumbledore! We both yelled. Dumbledore came there. What is it you want now, you despicable slobs? He asked angrily. Volsamort has Draco! We shouted at the same time. He laughed in an evil voice. No! Don't! We need to save Draco! We begged. No! He said meanly. I don't give a darn what Voldemort does to Draco! Not after how much he misbehaved in school, especially with you, Ebony! He said while he frowned looking at me. Besides, I never liked him that much anyway. Then he walked away. Vampire started crying. My Draco, he moaned. Orvis note. Don't you think gay guys are, like, so hot? It's okay! I tried to tell him, but that didn't stop him. He started to cry tears of blood. Then he had a brainstorm. I had an idea! He exclaimed. What? I asked him. You see? He said. He took out his wand and did a spell. Then, suddenly, we were in Vulnerable's lair! We ran in with our wands out, just as we heard a croon voice say, Alakavadra! It was... Voldemort! Chapter 14 Orvis note. Fuck off, preps, okay? Raven, thanks for helping again. I'm sorry I couldn't update, but I was depressed, and I had to go to the hospital because I slipped my wrists. P.S. I'm not updating until you give me ten god reviews. Warning, some of this chapter is extremely scary. Viewer excretion advised. We ran to where Voldemort was. It turns out that Voldemort wasn't there. It Instead, the fat guy who killed Cedric was. Draco was there, crying tears of blood. Snaketail was torturing him. Vampire and I ran in front of Snaketail. Read my sight, you despicable preps! He shouted. I mean, he started shooting him with a gun, he... Then suddenly he looked at me and he fell down with a lovey-dovey look in his eyes. Ebony, I love you, we have I me? He said. In this, he is 16 years old, so he's not a pedophile, okay? Huh? I asked. And Ebby, I love you. Will you have sex with me? Ah, oh, Snakedale. 
I started laughing crudely. What the fuck? You torture my boyfriend and then you expect me to fuck you? God, you are so fucked up, you fucking bastard. I said angrily. Then I stabbed him in the heart. Blood poured out of it like a fountain. Yeah! He screamed. He started screaming and running around. Then he fell down and died. I burst into tears. Sadly. Schnecktel, what art thou doing? Called Voldemort. Then he started coming. We could hear his high heels clacking to us. So we got on our broomsticks and we flew to Hogwarts. We went to my room. Vampire went away. There I started crying. What's wrong, honey? Asked Draco, taking off his clothes so we could screw. He had a sex pack, get it? Because he's so sexy. And a really huge you know what and everything. It's so unfair, I yielded. Why can't I just be ugly or plain, like all the other girls and preps here except for Bloody Mary, because she's not ugly or anything? Why would you want to be ugly? I don't like the preps anyway, they are such fucking sluts. Answered Draco. Yeah, but everyone is in love with me, like Snap and Lupin took a video of me naked. Hagrid says he's in love with me. Vampire likes me and now even Snake Tail is in love with me. I just want to be with you, okay, Draco? Why couldn't Satan have made me less beautiful? I shouted angrily. And don't worry, Anubi isn't a snob or anything, but a lot of people have told her because she's pretty. I'm good at too many things. Why can't I just be normal? It's a fucking curse! I shouted. And then I ran away. Chapter 15. Orvis note, stop flaming, okay? By the way, you suck from... No, every day something flames me. I'm going to slip my wrists. Thanks to Raven for helping. Anubi, Anubi! Shouted Draco sadly. No, please, come back! But I was too mad. Whatever, now you can go and have sex with Vampire. I shouted. I stormed into my room and closed my black door with my blood red key. It had a picture of Marilyn Manson on it. He looked so sexy in a way that reminded me of Draco and Vampire. I started to cry and weep. I took a razor and started to slit my wrists. I drank the blood, all depressed. Then I looked at my black GC watch. I noticed it was time to go to biology class. I put on a short, ripped, black gothic dress that said Anarchy on the front in blood red letters. I was all ripped and a spiky belt. Under that, I put on ripped black fishnets and boots that said Joel all over them with blood red letters. I put my ebony black hair out. Anyway, I went downstairs feeling all sad and depressed as usual. I did some advanced biology work. I was turning a bloody pentagram into a black guitar. Suddenly, the guitar turned to Draco. Enobi, I love you. He shouted sadly. I don't care what those fucker preps and posers think. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. Before I met you, I used to want to commit suicide all the time. Now I just want to fucking be with you. I fucking love you. Then, he started to sing The Chronicles of Life and Death. We considered it our song now, because we fell in love when Joel was singing it, right in front of the entire class. His singing voice was so amazing and gothic and sexy, like a cross between Gerard, Joel, Chester, Pierre, and Marilyn Manson. Author's note, don't you think those guys are so hot? If you don't know who they are, then get the fuck out of here. Oh my fucking god, I said, after he was finished. Some fucking preps stared at us, but I just stuck up my middle fingers that were covered in black nail polish and were entwined with Draco's nail at them. I love you, I said, and then we started to kiss, just like Hilary Duff. I fucking hate that bitch. And CMM in a Cinderella story. Then we went away holding hands. Lupin shouted at us, but he stopped because everyone was clapping by how sexy we looked together. Then I saw a poster saying that MCR would have a concert in Hogsmeade right then. We looked at each other, all shocked, and then we went together. Chapter 16. Orvis note. You know what? Shut up, okay? Prove to me you're not preps. Raven, you suck, you fucking bitch. Give me back my fucking sweater. You're supposed to write this. Raven, what the fuck? You're a bitch. You're supposed to do this. By the way, thanks to Brittany5655 for teaching me Japanese. We ran happily to Hogsmeade. There we saw the stage where GC had played. We ran in happily. MCR were there playing Helena. I was so fucking happy. Gerard looked even sexier than he did in the pictures. Even Draco thought so. I could totally see him getting an erection. But it didn't matter because I knew, no, that we were the only true ones for each other. 
I was wearing a black leather mini dress and black leather platinum boots with red rib fishnets. Draco was wearing a black baggy MCR t-shirt and black baggy pants. Anyway, we started moshing to Helena. We Frenched. We ran up to the front of the band to stage dive. Suddenly, Gerard pulled off his mask. So did the others. We gasped. It wasn't them at all, it was... Volsabot and the Death Dealers. WTF, Draco, I'm not going to a concert with you. I shouted angrily. Not after what happened to me last time. Even if it is MCR, and you know how much I like them. What? Because we... you know? He could get at it uncomfortably, because guys don't like to talk about you know what. Yeah, because we... you know. I yelled it in an angry voice. We won't do that again, Draco promised. This time we're going with an escort. Oh my fucking god, WTF, are you giving into the mainstream? I asked. So I guess you're a prep or a Christina or what now? No, he muttered loudly. Are you becoming a prep or what? I shooted angrily. And Nobi, I'm not. Please come with me. He bowed down to his knees and started swinging The World is Black by GC to me. I was flattered because that's not even a single. He had memorized the lyrics just for me. Okay then, I guess I will have to, I said. And then we French for a while and I went up to my room. Bloody Mary was standing there. How's your machine, girl? She said happily. She speaks Japanese, so do I. That means, how do you do in Japanese? By the way, Willow, that fucking poser got expelled. She found all her classes and she skipped maths. Always note, Raven, you fucking suck. Fuck you. It serves that fucking bitch right. I laughed angrily. Well, anyway... We were feeling all depressed. We watched some gothic movies like Das Nightmare Before Xmas. Maybe Willow will die too, I said. Kawhi! Bloody Mary shook her head erotically lethargically. Oh yeah! I have a confession after she gets spoiled. I murdered her. And then Lubin did it with her because he's a necrophiliac. Kawhi! I commented happily. We talked to each other in silence for the rest of the movie. Oh hey, by the way, I'm going to a concert with Draco tonight in Hogsmeade with MCR, I said. I need to wear, like, the hottest outfit ever. Bloody Mary nodded energetically. Oh my fucking god, totally. Let's go shopping. In Hot Topic, right? I asked, already getting out my special Hot Topic loyalty card. No? My head snapped up. What? My head spun. I could not believe it. Bloody Mary, are you a prep? No, no, she laughed. I found some cool gothic stores near Hogwarts, that's all. Who told you about them? I asked. Sure it would be Draco or Diabolo or Vampire. Don't even say that name to me. Or me. Dumbledore, she said. Let me just call up Roms. Oh my fucking god, Dumbledore? I asked quietly. Yeah. I saw the map of Hogsmeade on his desk, she told me. Come on, let's go! We were going in a few punk golf stores, especially for the concerts in Hogsmeade's. The sale person was, oh my god, hotter than Gerard, except not because that's impossible. And he gave me a few dresses. When do you only have these for? The true golfs. The real golfs? Me and Bloody Mary asked. Yeah, you wouldn't believe how many posers there are in this town, man. Yesterday, Lupin and Snap tried to buy a gothic camera pouch. He shook his head. I didn't even know they had a camera. Oh my fucking god, no! They're going to spy on me again! I cried, running out of the change room wearing a long black dress with lots of red tuli coming out and a very low cut with a huge slit. Oh my Satan, you have to buy that outfit, the salesperson said. Yeah, it looks totally hot, said Bloody Mary. You know what, I am going to give it to you free, because you look really hot in that outfit. Hey, are you going to be at that concert tonight? He asked. Yes, I am actually. I looked back at him. Hey, by the way, my name's Ebondi Darkness Dimension Haraway. What's yours? Tom Rind, he said, and ran a hand through his black dyed hair. Maybe I'll see you there tonight. Yeah, I don't think so, because I'm going there with my boyfriend Draco, you sick perv. I yelled angrily.
but before he could beg me to go with him, Hagrid flew in on his black broom looking worried. OH MY FUCKING GOD EVERY YOU TO GET HIM BACK IN THE CORNER NOW! Chapter 17 Author's Note I said stop flaming the styro. If you're a prep, then don't read it. You can tell whether you're a prep or not by my quiz is on my homepage. If you're not, then you rock. If you are, then you fuck off! P.S. Willow isn't really a prep. Raven, please don't do this. I promise to give you back your poster. Tom Riddle gave us some clothes and stuff for free. He said he would help us with makeup if he wanted, because he was really into fashion and stuff. He is bisexual. Hagrid kept shooting at us to come back to Hogwarts. WTF, Hagrid! I shouted angrily. Fuck off, you fucking bastard! Well, anyway, Willow came. Hagrid went away angrily. Hey, bitch, you look kawaii, she said. Yeah, but not as kawaii as you, I answered sadly, because Willow's really pretty at everything. She was wearing a short black corset thingy with blood red lace on it and a black blood red miniskirt, leather fishnets and black pointy boots that showed off how pale she was. She had a really nice body with big bobs and everything. She was thin enough to be anorexic. So, are you going to the concert with Draco? She asked. Yeah, I said happily. I'm going with Diabolo, she answered happily. Well, anyway, Draco and Diabolo came. They were both looking extremely hot and sexy, and you could tell they thought we were O2. Diabolo was wearing a black t-shirt that said 666 on it. He was wearing tons of makeup, just like Marilyn Manson. Draco was wearing black leather pants, a gothic black GC t-shirt, and black vans he got from the Warped Tower. Bloody mop! Was going to the concert with Dracola! Dracola used to be called Naval, but it turned out that he was kidnapped at birth, and his real family were vampires. They died in a car crash. Naval converted to Satanism, and he went goth. He was in Slytherin now. He was wearing a black warped t-shirt, black jeans, and shoes and black hair with red streaks in it. We call him Dracula now. Well, anyway, we all went to Draco's black Mercy Benz. Get it? Because we're goofy. That is dead Lucian gave him. We did pot, coke, and crack. Draco and I made out. We made fun of those stupid fucking brebs. We soon got there. I gasped. Gerard was the sexiest guy ever. He looked even sexier than he did in pics. He had long, raven black hair and piercing blue eyes. He was really skinny, and he had an amazing ethnic voice. We marched to Helena and some older songs. Suddenly, Gerard pulled off his mask. So did the other members. I gasped. It wasn't Gerard at all. It was an ugly preppy man with no nose and red eyes. Everyone ran away but me and Draco. Draco and I came. It was Lodomot and the Death Dealers. You moronic idiots! He shooted angstily. Enobi, I told you to kill Vampire. Thou have failed, and now I shall kill thou and Draco. No! No, please! We begged Sally, but he took out his knife. Suddenly, a gothic old man flew in on his broomstick. He had long black hair and a long black bread. He was wearing a black robe that said, Avil Levangri, on the back. He shot at a spell and Voldemort ran away. It was... Dumbledore! Chapter 18 All this note, I said stop flaming. If you do, then you're a fucking prep. Thanks to Raven for the help and stuff. You rock. And you're not a prep. Thanks for my sweater. P.S. to Oda Epson Dumbledore swore is cause he tried to be gothic and so dear. I woke up the next day in my coffin. I walked out of it and put on some black eyeliner, black eyeshadow, blood bed lipstick, and a black, really low-cut leather dress that was all ripped and in stripes, so you could see my belly. I was wearing a skull belly ring, with black and red diamonds inside it. The night before, Draco and I rent back to the skull. Get it, cause I'm gothic and I like death. Dumbledore chased Vladimir away. We flew there on our brooms. Mine was black and the broom stuff was blood red. There was lace all over it. Draco had a black MCR broom. We went back to our rooms and we had, you know what, to a Linkin Park song. Well, anyway, I went down to the Great Hall. 
there were da walls were painted black, and da tables were black too. But you could see that there was pink pant underneath the black pant. And there were posters of poster bands everywhere, like Ashley Sampson at the Backstreet Boys. WTF! I shouted, going to sit next to Bloody Mary and Willow. Bloody Mary was wearing a black leather mini of a good Charlotte t-shirt, black fishnets, or black pointy boots. Willow was wearing a long black black dress with a blood red writing that was all lacy and came up to your thighs and black boots and fishnets. Vampire, Dracula, and Draco came. We started to talk about who was sexier, Mikey or Gerard Way, or Billy Joe Armstrong. The boys joined in, because they were bi. Those guys are so fucking hot, Naval was saying, as suddenly a gothic old man with a black beard and everything came. He was the same one who had chased away Vladimort yesterday. He had a normal tan skin, but he was wearing white foundation, and he had dyed his hair black. Dumbledore? We all gasped. WTF! I shouted angrily. I thought he was just wearing that to scare Voldemort. Hello everyone! He said happily. As you can see, I gave the room a makeover! What do you think about it? Everyone from the poser table in Gryffindor started to cheer. Well, we goths just looked at each other all disfused and shook our heads. We couldn't believe what a poser he was. By the way, you can call me Albert! He called as we left to our classes. What a fucking poser! Draco shouted angrily as we went through transformation. We were holding hands. Vampire looked really jealous. I could see him crying blood in a gothic way. Get it? Way like Gerard. But I didn't say anything. I bet he's having a midlife crisis. Willow shouted. I was so fucking angry. Chapter 19. I'm not. Okay, I promise. Author's note, please stop flaming the story. If you do, you're a fucking prep and you're jealous, okay? From now, I'm not going to deal with demeanor reviews. By the way, everyone's a poor blood so dare. Thanks to Raven for the help. All day we sat angrily thinking about Dumbledore. We were so fucking pissed off. Well, I had one thing to look forward to. The MCR concert. It had been postponed so we could all go. Anyway... I went to the common room sadly to cut glasses. Draco was being all sensitive. I asked what it was and he got all mad at me and started crying all hot and angsty. My sensitive bi guys are so hot. No one fucking understands me, he shouted angrily as his black hair went in his big blue eyes like Billy Joel in Boulevard of Broken Dreams. He was wearing a black baggy pants, a black MCR t-shirt and a black dye. Get it? Instead of tie because I'm gothic? I was wearing a black leather low-cut top with chains all over it, and all over it a black leather mini, black high held boots, and a cross belly thing. My hair was all up and messy, really high bun, like Amy Lee and Gone Under. Emo me, if you want to see the pic. Accuse me? What about me? I growled. Meh, 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 he grunted. You fucking bastard! I moaned. No, wait, it's not what it fucking looks like, he shouted. But it was too late. I knew what I heard. I ran to the bathroom angrily, crying. Draco banged on the door. I whipped and whelped as my bloody eyeliner streamed down my cheeks. I made cool tears down my faces like Benji in a video for girls and boys. Raven, that is so our video. I took out a cigarette end, started to smoke pot. Suddenly, Hagrid came. He had appropriated. You gave me a fucking shock. I shouted angrily, dropping my pot. WTF do you think you're doing in the girls' room? Only it wasn't just Hagrid. Someone else was with him too. For a second I wanted it to be Tom Ridd or maybe Draco. But it was Dumbledore. Hey, I need to ask you a question. He said, pulling out his black wannabe gothic purse. What are you wearing to the concert? You know who MCR are? I gasped. No! I just saw there was a concert that a lot of gothic and punks were going to. He said. Anyway, Draco has a surprise for you. Chapter 20. Author's note, I said, hi, naughty hair, what you think? Prof, stop flaming, okay, preps. Thanks to Raven for the help. Oh yeah, by the way, I'll be on vacation in Transylvania for the next three days. So don't expect updates. All day I wondered what the surprise was. 
Meanwhile, I put on a black leather mini, a black corset with purple lace stuff all over it, a black gothic combat boots. MCR were gone to the concert again since Blocks of Water had taken over the last one. I stayed my wrist while I moshed to MCR in my bedroom all night, feeling excited. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door while I was trying on some black clothes and moshing to Fang Yu for the bedroom. I got all mad and turned it off, but sacredly, I hopped inside that it was Draco so we could do it again. What the fucking hell are you doing? I shouted angrily. It was Lupin. Are you going to come rape your what? I yelled. I was allowed to say that because Doubly Door had told us all to be careful around him and Snape since he was a pedo. No, actually. Get it, hell? Can I please borrow some condoms? He growled angrily. Yeah, so you can fuck your six-year-old girlfriend, huh? I shouted sarcastically. Fuck her, he said, going away. Well, anyway, I put on some black eyeshadow, black eyeliner, and some black lipstick and white foundation. Then I went. Then I gasped. Snake and Lupin were in the middle of the empty hall, doing it. And Dobby was watching. Oh my god, you ludicrous idiot. They both shooted angrily when they saw me. Dobby ran away, crying. They got up, though. Normally, I would have been turned on. I love seeing guys do it, but both of them were fucking preps. By the way, Snake has moved to Gryffindor now. W2 if is that, why are you wanting condoms? I asked sarcastically. See, I spelled that. Only you wouldn't give them to me. Lumpkin shouted angrily. Well, you should have told me, I replied. You dimwit. Snake began to shoot angrily. And then, I took out my black camera and took a pic of them. You could see that they were naked and everything. Well, excuse me, they both shouted angrily. What was that all about? It was to blackmail you, I snarked. So now next time you see me doing it with my boyfriend, you can't fucking rat me out. Or I'll show this to Dumbledore. So fuck off, you bastards. I started to run. They chased me, but I threw my wound at them, and they tripped over it. Well, anyway, I went outside and there was Vampire looking extremely fucking hot. WTF! Where's Draco? I asked him. Oh, he's been a fucking bastard. He told me he wouldn't come. Vampire said, shaking his head. You want to come with me? To the concert? Then, he showed me his flying car. I gasped. It was a black car. He said his dog father Sirius Black had given it to him. The license plate on the front said, MCR 666 on it. The one on the back said, Anobi on it. I gasped. We flew to the concert hall. MCR were there playing. Vampire and I began to make out, moshing to the music. I gasped, looking at the band. I almost had an organism. Gerard was so fucking hot. He began to sing Helena, and then his sexy, beautiful voice began to fill the hall. And then I heard some crying. I turned and saw Draco, crying in the corner. Chapter 21. Office note. Fuck you, okay? You fucking suck. It's not my fault if it's spelt wrong, okay? Cause dad bitch Raven cause it fuck you preps. Whoops, sauce Raven, thanks for the help. By the way, Transylvania rocks hard. I even got to go to ca the castle where Dracula was filmed. Later, we all went in the skull. Draco was crying in the common room. Draco, are you okay? I asked in a gothic voice. No, I'm not, you fucking bitch. He shouted angrily. He started to run out of the place in a suicidal way. I started to cry because I was afraid he would commit suicide. It's okay, Yanobi, said Vampire comfortably. I'll make him feel better. You mean you'll go fuck him, won't you? I shouted angrily. Then I ran to get Draco. Vampire came too. Draco, please come. He began to cry. Tears of blood came down his pale face. I was so turned on because I love sensitive bi guys. If you're a homophobe, then fuck off. And then, we heard some footsteps. Vampire got out his black invincibility coke. We both got under it. We saw the janitor, Mr. Norris there, shouting angrily with a flashlight in his hand. Who's there? He shouted angrily. We saw Filth come. He went under the invisibility coke and started to meow loudly. Is anyone there? yelled Mr. Norris. 
No, fuck you, you preppy little poser son of a fucking bitch. Vampire said under his breast in a disgusted way. Hey, excuse me! Hey, excuse me, who said that? Yard Mr. Norris. Then he heard Filch meow. Filth? Is there anyone under the cloak? He asked. Filth nodded. And then, Vampire Frenched me. He did it just as Mr. Norris was taken off the cloak. What the? He yelled, but it was too late because now we were running away from him. And then we saw Draco crying and busting into tears and slitting his wrists outside of the school. Draco! I cried. Are you okay? I guess though. Draco weeps. We went back to our coffins, frenching each other. Draco and I decided to watch Lake Placid. See, isn't that depressing? On the gothic red bed together. As I was about to put in the video, my eyes rolled up. And suddenly, I had a vision of something that was happening now. There was a knock on the door and Fug and the Ministry of Magic walked into the school. Chapter 22. Office note. Shut the fuck up. Prince, stop flaming, okay? If you don't like it, fuck off. I know it's Mr. Norris. It's Raven's fault, okay? You suck. No, just kidding, Raven. You fucking rock. Preps suck. All day, everyone talked about the misery of magic. Well, anyway, I woke up the next day. I was in my coffin, so I opened the door. I was wearing black lacy leather pajamas. Then I gasped. Standing in front of me were Blarney Mary, Vampire, Diabolo, Draco, Dracula, and Willow. I opened my crimson eyes. Willow was wearing a tight black leather top with pictures of bloody roses all over it. Under that, she was a black puffy skirt with lace on it and black gothic boots that was attached to the top. Vampire was wearing a baggy simple plan t-shirt and baggy black pants and vans. Draco was wearing a black MCR t-shirt and black jeans and a leather jacket. He looked just like Gerard Way and almost as fucking sexy. Vampire looked like John Madden. Lonnie Mary was wearing a tight black puffy gothic dress that she had ripped. She was showing signs of all her cleavage with a white apron that said, Bish! Another swear word, and empty all lyrics on it. Kinda like the one dress I had seen Amy Lear wear once. Darkness, who was Jenny, was there too. She was wearing a ripped gothic black dress with ripped stuff all over it, and a lace up top thing, and black pointy boots. So were Crab and Goyle. It turns out that Darkness, Diabolo, Crab and Goyle's dad, was a vampire. He committed suicide by slitting his wrist with a razor. He had raped them and stuff before too. They all got so depressed that they became gothic and converted to stanism. Oh my fucking god! I yelled as I jumped up. Why the fuck are you all there? And Nobi, something is really fucked up, Draco said. Okay, but I need to put on my fucking clothes on first, I shouted angrily. It's alright, we have to go now. You look so kawaii anyway. You're so fucking beautiful, Draco said in a sexy voice. Oh, alright, I said smiling. But you have to tell me why you're being all erective. I will, I will, he said. So I just put on some black eyeliner, black lipstick and red eyeshadow and white foundation. Then I came. We all went outside the Great Hall. I looked in from a window. A fucking prep called Brittany from Gryffindor was standing next to us. She was wearing a pink mini and a Hillary Duff t-shirt, so we put up our middle fingers at her. Inside the Great Hall, we could see Dumbledore. Cornelia Fudge was there shouting at Dumbledore. Doris Rumbridge was there too. This cannot be! She shouted angrily. The school must be closed! The Bark Lord is planning to kill the students, yelled Cornelia Fudge. You are not fit to be the principal any longer, yelled Rumbridge. You are too old and your eyesight this is dangerous. You must rely or Voldemort will kill your students. Very well, Dumbledore said angrily. But we cannot do this. We can't close the school. There is only one person who is capable of killing Voldemort, and she is in the school. And her name is... Anubi Darkness Dementia Raven Way! Draco, Crab, Goyo, Darkness Willow Vampire, and Blarney Mary looked at each other. I gasped! Chapter 23 Author's Note Shut the fuck up, bitches. You're just jealous because I got 10,000 reviews. And thanks to Raven for the help, and telling me about the books, girls, rocks, let's go shopping together. 
The door opened, and Professor Rumbridge and Cornelia Fudge stomped out, angrily. Then Dumbledore and Rumbridge sawed us. Mr. Way, what the bleep are you doing? Rumbridge shouted angrily. Dumbledore blared at her. Oops! She made a mistake! He corrupted her. She means, hi everybody, come in! Well, we all came in, angrily. So did all the other students. I sat between Darkness and Draco, and opposite Blarney Mary. Crab and Goyle started to make some morbid jokes. They both looked exactly like Villavolo. I ate some Count Chocula and drank some blood from a cup. Then I heard someone shooting angrily. I looked behind me. It was Vampire. He and Draco were shooting each other. Vampire, Draco, WTF, I asked. You fucking bastard, yelled Draco at Vampire. I want to shit next to her. No, I do, shouted. No, she doesn't fucking like you, you son of a bitch, yelled Draco. No, fuck you, motherfucker, she leaves me, not you, shouted Vampire. And then, he jumped on Draco. No, not in that way, you perv. They started to fight and beat each other up. Dumbledore yelled at them, but they didn't stop. All of a sudden, a terrible man with red eyes and no nose flew in on his broomstick. He had no nose! I was wearing a grey robe. All the glass in the window he flew through fell apart. Brittany, that fucking prep, started to cry. Vampire and Draco stopped fighting. I shopped eating. Everyone gasped. That room fell silent. Volsamot! Everybody, everybody. Darth Vader said evilly in his raspy voice, Thou had failed your mission. No, I shall kill thou, and I shall kill Vampire as well. If thou dost not kill him before, then I shall kill Draco too. Please don't make me kill him, please! I begged. No, he laughed cruelly. Kill him, or I shall kill him anyway. Then he flew away, cackling. I burst into tears. Draco and Vampire came to contort me. Suddenly, my eyes rolled up, so they looked all cool and gothic. I had a vision where I saw some lightning flash, and then Voldemort coming to kill Draco, while Draco slit his wrist in a depressed way. No! I screamed sexily. Suddenly, I locked up and stopped having the vision. Ebony, Ebony, are you alright? Asked Draco in a worried voice. Yeah, yeah, I said sadly as I got up. Everything's all fine, Ebony, said Vampire, all sensitive. No, it's not, I shouted angrily. Tears of blood went down my face. OMFG, what if I'm getting possessed like in the ring too? It's okay, girl, said Bloody Mary. Maybe you should ask Professor Sinister about what the visions mean, though. Okay, bitch, I said sadly, and then we went. Chapter 4. Orvis Note. Prep, stop flaming to story. You're just jealous, so fuck off, you okay? You go to hell. Raven, thanks for the help. Well, we had divination next, so I got to ask Professor Trevorley about the visions. Konnichiwa! Everybody come in! Said Professor Sinister in Japanese. She smelled at me with her gothic black lipstick. She's the coolest fucking teacher ever. She had long, dead black hair with blood red tips and red eyes. Her mom was a vampire. She's also half Japanese, so she speaks it and everything. She and Bloody Mary get along great. She's really young for a teacher. Today she was wearing a black leather top with red lace and a long gothic black ribbed dress. We went inside the black classroom with pastors of Emily the Strong. I raised my hand. I was wearing some black nate Polish with red pentagrams on it. What is it, Emily? She asked. Hey! I love your nail polish, where did you get it, Hot Topic? Yeah, I answered. All the preps who didn't know what Hot Topic was gave me weird looks. I gave them the middle finger. Well, I have to talk to you about some things. When do you want to do it? Who but now? She asked. Okay, I said. Okay, class fucking dismissed everyone. Professor Trevely said and she let everyone go. Except for you, Brittany. She pointed at Brittany and some other preps. Please do exercise. Get it. 
What on page three? Okay. I'm having lots of visions, I said in a worried voice. I'm so worried, is Draco going to die? Well, she gave me a black crystal ball to lock in. I looked at it. What do you see? She asked. I said I see a black god with skull and a pentagram. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. I looked at it. It was Draco. He was looking really sexy wearing a black leather facet, a black gothic Lincoln Park t-shirt, and black congress shoes. Okay, you can go now. See you, cunt, <laughs> said Professor Sinister. Bye, bitch, I said, waving. I went to Draco, and Vampire was sitting next to him. We both followed Draco together, and I was so exhibited. Chapter 25 Author's Note Stop flaming, okay? If you're not, then I'll tell Justin to beat you up. And I'll tell all the Reds to put virtues in your computer. Fuck you. Raven. Thanks for the help. I was so excited. I followed Draco, wondering if we should go to do it again. We went outside, and then we went into Draco's black car. Ebony, what the fuck did Professor Trevely say? whispered Draco, pointing his Kothic wit hand with a black nail polish on mine. She said she would tell me when the visions meant tomorrow. I grumbled in a sexy voice. He took out a heroin cabinet and spiked it, and gave it to me to spork. He started to fly the car into a tree. We went to the top of it. Draco put on some MCR. And all the things that you never ever told me, and all the smiles that are ever gonna haunt me, sang Gerard's sexy voice. We started tiling off each other's clothes fervently. He took off my black thong and my black leather bar. I took off his black boxes, then he put his throbbing you know what in my tool sexily. OMFG! Draco Draco! I screamed, having an orgasm. We stated Frenching passively. Then I fell asleep. I started having a dream. In it, a black guy was shooting two gothic men with long black hair. No, please don't fucking kill us, they pleaded, but he just kept shooting them. He ran away in a red car. No! Oh my fucking god! I shouted in a scared voice. Ebony, what's wrong? Draco asked me as I woke up opening my icy blue eyes. I started to cry and tears of blood went down my face. I told Draco to call Vampire. He did it with his black Lincoln Park mobile. But the worst thing was who the people who were shot in the dream were. Lucian and Sirius. Chapter 22. Orbus Note. Prep, stop flaming the story, okay? If you don't like the story, then go fuck yourself, you fucking prep. You suck. Oh, why? And I wasn't being racist, okay? A few mutates later, a vampire came to the tree. He was wearing a black leather Jackson, black leather pants, and a good Charlotte t-shirt. Hi, vampire, I said flirtingly as I started to sob. Draco hugged me sexily, trying to comfort me. I started to cry tears of blood, and then told them what happened. Oh, fuck it, vampire shouted angrily. He forced started to cry sadly. What fucking dick did that? I don't know, I said. Now oh, come on, we have to know Dumbledore. We ran out of the tree and into the castle. Dumbledore was sitting in his office. Sire, our dads have been shot, Drago said while we whipped some tears from his white face. Enobi had a vision in a dream. Dumbledore started to cockle. Ho ho ho! And how do you expect me to know Evan is not divination? I glared at Dumbledore. Look, motherfucker! He said angrily as Dumbledore gasped. See, is that tool of crater? You know very well that I'm not delusional. Now get some fucking people out there to look for serious illusion. Porn to! Okay! He said in an intimated voice. Where are they? I thought about it. Then all of a sudden, Long Dong! I said. I told him which street. He went and called some people and did some stuff. After a few mistunes, he came back and said people were going out looking for them. After a while, someone called him again. He said that they had been found. Draco, Vampire, and I all left our rooms together. I went with Draco to wait in the nurse's office while Vampire went to slit his wrists in his room. We looked at each other's gothic, depressed eyes. Then we kissed. 
Suddenly, Sirius and Lucian came in on stretchers, and Professor Sinister was behind them. <laughs> Chapter 27. Vampires will never hurt you. Author's note. You know what? I don't give a fuck what you preps think about me, so stop flaming the fucking story, bitches. Thanks to Raven for your love and support and help, and I love you, girl. Sorry I couldn't update, lol. I was really depressed, and I slid my wrists. I had to go to the hospital. Raven, you rock, girl. Everyone in the room started to cry happily. I had saved them. Draco, Lucian, Sirius Bond Vampire all came to hug me. The nurse started to give them medicine. Come on, Inobi, said Professor Sinatra. She was wearing a gothic black leather dress with a corset top and real vampire blood on it and fucking black platinum boots. I have to tell you the fucking partition! I looked at Lucian, Seraphis, Drake, and Vampire. They nodded. I smelled happily and went into a dark room. I changed Professor Sinister, took out some black cards. She started to look into a black crucible ball. She said, Tara! I see dark times are near! She said, badly. She pressed into the balls. You see, you must go back in time! She took out a time toner like Bloody Mary had. When Voldemort was in Hogwarts, before he became powerful, he got his heart broken. Now, do you think he would still become Voldemort if he was in love? I shook my head. You must go back in time and seduce him. It is the only way. If he is still evil, then you must kill him. You can come to my room tomorrow and you can do it. Okay, I said sadly. We did death touch sin. I went outside again, sadly. What fucking happened? Asked Draco and Vampire. Yeah, what happened? Asked Artness, Willow and Bloody Mary. I was about to tell them, but everyone was there. They were celebrating Lucian and Sirius being fond. Everyone was proud of me, but I just wanted to talk to Draco. They were cheesing my name. And some reporters were there, trying to interview Dumbledore. A banner was put up. Lots of fucking preps were there, obviously trying to be gothic, wearing the him sign on their hands, despite them not actually having heard of him. Even Mr. Norris looked happy. A black and red cake had been bought out. Crab and Goyle set up some fireworks in the shape of skulls from Wesley's Wizard Wises. I put on my invisibility coke with Vampire and Draco, and we sneaked out together. Chapter 28. Author's note, I said stop going the story, it was a mistake when Professor Rawley said that, okay? Go to fucking hell. You suck. Thanks to Philly for the help. Raven, have fun with Kiwi. We went into a black room. The walls were black, with portraits of gothic bands like MCR, GC, and Marilyn Manson all over them. A big black coffin was in the middle. Red velvet lined the black box. There were three chairs, made of bones, with real skulls in them. I was wearing a black corset bar, with purple stuff on it, fishnet suckings, and a black leather thong underneath. I sat down one of the chairs despairingly. So did Draco and Vampire. Are you okay? Vampire asked, potting his a bastard hand on mine. He was wearing black nail polish. I was wearing black nail polish with red crosses on it. Yeah, I guess, I said sadly. Draco also put his hand on mine, sexily. I smiled sadly with my black lipstick. The problem is, I have to seduce Voldemort. I'll have to go back in time. Draco started to cry sadly. Vampire hugged him. It's okay, Ebony, he said finally. But what about me? You're not going to break up or anything, are you? Of course not. I gasped. Really? He asked. Sure, I said. We Frenched sexily. Vampire looked at us longingly. Then I took off Draco's MCR shrift and seductively took off his pants. He was hard like a Stallone. He had replaced the vampire tattoo that said Anubi on it. Black roses were around it. I gasped. It looked exactly like Gerard Way. Vampire took a video camera. I had said it was okay before. I took off my clothes and we were in for the rid of your life. 
We started Frenching as we climbed into the coffin. He put his spork into our you-know-what, and passively, we did it. I love you, Anobi. Oh, let me feel you. I need to feel you, he screamed, as we got an orgasm. We watched Vampire, filmed everything perfectly. Suddenly, what the fuck are you doing? It was Stope and Professor McGoogle. <laughs> Chapter 29. Orvis note, sort of das fuck up. You're just jealous because you're preps, so fuck off. Raven, you rock girl, thanks for the help. MCR Rock 666. Oh my Satan! We screamed as we jumped out of the coffin. Snap and Professor Bugrugl started to shout at us angrily. Come now! Preacher Bugrugl knew it. We did, guiltily. We left the room putting on our clothes. Snoop gobbled to the caramel and put it in his pocket. Hey, what the fuck? Vampire shooted angrily. Yeah, buster. What the fuck are you going to do with the fucking camera? Draco demoned all protective, looking at me longingly with his gothic red eyes. Look, Dumbledore knows your little secret, and if you do this again, then you will go to some mangoes, so give back to camera. Ha ha ha, the Ministry of Magic thinks he is crazy. There is no way they will believe him. Snoop laughed meaningly. Yes! So shut your mouth, you insolent fools! Yelled Professor Mook Google. She made us come into a weird room with white stones all around it. There were all these weird tools in it. Draco started to cry, oh, sexy, as suggestive. Get it? Because he's a sex bomb. Lol, Tom Fennot rules for life, but not as much as Gerard, you sex on legs. I love you, so fucking marry me. I started to cry, tears of blood. It happens in Vampire Chronics. Raven said so, okay, so fuck you. Vampire took out a blank honkerchief and started to wipe my red eyes. And then, he and Snoop both took out guns using magic. They started to shoot each other angrily. None of the ballots got in each other yet. I took out my wand. Crossio, I shouted. Snap started to scream. He dropped a gun. But it was too late. Both of them had run out of bullets. I stopped their curse. Professor McGoogle did a spell so that we were all chained up. She took out a box of tools. Then she said, Okay, Severus, I'm going to go now! She left. Snap started to laugh evilly. Vampire started to cry. It's okay, Anobi, said Draco. Evergreen will be alright. Remember the video you took of Snape? Snape laughed again. And then, he took out some whips! Chapter 30 Orvis note, stop flaming the story, okay? You don't know what's even gonna happen, okay? So, fool you. If you flame, you will be a prep, so all flamers can kiss my ass. Sauce for saying for <laughs> outsiders is dongerous, but that's the mystery options, cause society basically sucks. Thanks to Raven, you rock bitch. No! We screamed sadly. Snap stated, loafing meaningly. He took out a camera, anvilly. Then... He came towards Dorco. He took some stones out of his pocket. He put the stones around Draco and knit a candle. What the fuck are you doing? I shouted angrily. Snoop laughed meanly. He pulled down his pants. I gasped. There was a dork mark on his you know what. He waved his wand and a knife came. He gave the knife to me. You must have vampire. He said to me. If you don't, then I'll rap Draco. No, you fucking bastard! I yielded. But then Draco looked at me sadly with his evil, gothic red eyes that looked so depressant and sexy. It looked exactly like a pentagram. Lol, get it, because I'm a satanist. Within Kurt Cobain and Gerard. But then I looked at Vampire, and he looked so smexy too with his gothic black hair. I thought of the time when we screwed, and the time I did it with Draco and Dumbledore came, and the time where Draco almost committed suicide, and Vampire was so sportive. Snipe laughed angrily. He started to pray to Volksamort. He started to do an incapacitation, dancing around the stokes, whipping Draco and Vampire. Suddenly, an idea I had. 
I closed my eyes and, using my vampire powers, I sent a telepathic message to Draco and Vampire so they would destruct Snape. Dumbledore will get you, Draco shooted. Yeah, just wait until the mystery find out, Vampire yelled. Meanwhile, I took out my wand. You ridiculous donder head, Snoop yielded. He took off all of Draco's clothes, just as he was about to wrap him. Crossio! I shitted, pointing my wand. <laughs> Snoop screamed and started running around the room screaming. Meanwhile, I grabbed my black mobile and sent a text to Sirius. I stopped doing Crucio. You dunderhead, I'm going to kill. Shooted Snape, but suddenly, Severus came. Snape poked the whip behind his back. Oh, hello, Sev, I was just teaching them something. He lied. But suddenly, Lucian and Professor Trevely came into that room, and they and Sirius unlocked the chains and put them around Snap. Then Professor Trawley said, Come on, everybody! Let's go! Chapter 31 Author's note, I said, shut the fuck up, you quiffers. Stop calling Ebony a Mary Sue, okay? You don't even know what's going to happen, okay? So fuck you. Thanks to my BAFF Raven for the help. I always knew you were on Voldemort's side, you son of a bitch! Sirius said to Snape. No, I'm not. I was teaching them something. Snap clammed. Oh, fucking yeah! I took out some black Voldemort serum out of my pocket and gave it to Severus. He made Snap drunk it. He did angrily. Then Lucius took out a tape recorder and started playing it while he did curses on Snap. Then Professor Sinister and Lucian made us get out with them while Snap told his secrets. Lucian took Vampire and Drago to the nurse after thanking me a million times. Professor Trevely took me to a dark room. Now I was going to go back in time to the doubts Voldemort. Moving posters of MCR and Nirvana all over. Hermione, Darkness and Willow came too. Bloody Mary gave me a black bag from Ton Rid's store. What's in the bag? I asked Professor Trevely. You will see, she said. I opened the bag. In it was a sexy, tight, low smut, black leather gothic dress. It had red corset stuff and there was a slit up the leg. I put it on. My friends helped me put on black fishnets and black pointy boots Willow had chosen. Willow and Darkness helped me put on black eyeliner and blood red lip stroke. You look fucking quiet, bitch! Bloody Mary said. Thanks, I said. Okay, you're now going to go back in time, said Professor Sinister. You'll have to do it in a few sessions. She gave me a black gun. I put in a strap on my fish desk like in Resident Evil. Then she gave me a black time tuner. After an hour, use the time tuner to go back here, Professor Trevely said. Then she and Bloody Mary put a pensive in front of me. Everyone went in front of it. Good luck, everyone shouted. Darkness and Willow gave me death's touch sin. Then I jumped sexily into the pensive. Suddenly, I was in front of to school. In front of me was one of the sexiest golf guys I had ever seen. He was wearing long black hair, kind of like Mikey Way, only black. He had green eyes like Billy Joe Armstrong and pale wit hair. He was wearing a black ripped-off suit with vans. It was Tom Bombadil! Chapter 32 Author's note, I said stop flaming. I know his name isn't Tom Bodil. That was a mistake. If you don't like the story, then you can go screw yourself. You suck. Hi, I said flatly. I'm Anobi Wade, a new student. I shot my pale hands with their black nail polish with him. The name's Tom, he said. But you can call me Satan. That's my middle name. We shook hands. Well, come on, we have to go upstairs, Satan said. I followed him. Hey, Satan. Do you happen to be a fan of Grande? Since MCR and every house don't exist yet, then, I asked. Oh my fucking god! How do you know? Satan gasped. Actually, I like GC a lot too. Get it? Because GC did that song, I Just Wanna Live, that sounded really 80s. Oh my god! Me too! I replied happily. Guess what they have in concert in Hogsment? Satan whispered. Hogsment? 
I asked. Yeah, that's what they used to call it in these times before it became Hogsmeade in 20... <laughs> into a thousand. He told me all secretively. And there's a really cool shop called Hot... Topic! I finished. Happy again. He frowned confusedly. No! It's called Hot Issue! He smiled really again. Then in 1998, they changed it to Hot Topic! He moaned. Okay. Now everything was making sense for me. So is Dumbledore your principal? I shouted. Uh huh. He looked at his black nails. I'm his Slytherin! Oh my fucking god, me too! I shrieked. You go to the school? Get it, cause I'm gothic? He asked. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm you! I smiled happily. Suddenly, Dumbledore flew on his broomstick and started shredding at us angrily. No talking in the halls! He had short blonde hair and was wearing a polo shirt from American Oogle Outfitters. Stupid coughs! Satan rolled his eyes. He's so mean to us goths and bucks, just because we're a slivering and we're not preps. I turned around angrily. Actually, I think maybe it's because you're a debark lord. WTF! He asked angrily. Oh, nothing, I said sweetly. Then suddenly, the floor opened. Oh my fucking god, no! I screamed as I fell down. Everyone looked at me weirdly. Hey, where are you going? Satan asked as I fell. I got out of the hall and I was back in the pensive in Professor Trolley's classroom. Dumbly Dum was there. Dumbly Door, I think I just met you, I said. Oh yeah, I remember that, Dumbly Door said, trying to be all gothic. Sinister came in. Hey, this is my classroom. Wait, WTF enemy, what the hell are you doing? Um, I looked at her. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. What the hell, Al? I screamed, forgetting she was a teacher for a second. She's a golf, so it's okay. Professor Sister looks sad. Um, I was drinking some vodka serum. She started to cry black tears of depression. Dumbly Dum didn't know about them. Hey, are you crying tears of blood? He asked curiously, touching a tear. Fuck off! We both said, and Dumbly Dum took his hand away. Professor Sinister started crying again in her chair, sobbing limpid tears. Oh my fucking god! Everybody! I think I'm addicted to Voldemort Serum! Author's note. See you fucking preps, go fuck yourselves, that's serious issues. So go to hell. Chapter 33. Author's note. I said shut up. It's not my fault, okay? If you don't like the story, then you're a prep. So fuck you, flamers. P.S. I'm not updating until you give me five good reviews, and this time I mean it. You suck. Thanks, Raven, for to help. I promise to help you with your story, lols. Oh my fucking god! I shoot it sadly. Should we get you to St. Mangus, bitch? Hell no! She said. Lizzie and Epoxy, I need your help. Next time you go in time, do you think you could ask Tom Anderson for some help? Sure, I said sadly. I went outside the door. Draco was there. He was wearing a big black GC t-shirt, which was his pajamas. Hey, sexy, I said. How did it go, Nobi? He asked in his voice was so sexy and low, kind of like Gerard Way when he's talking. Fine, I responded. We started to go back into the dorm. How far did you go with Satan? Draco asked jealously. Not too far, lol. I balked. Will you have to do it with him? Draco asked angrily. I hope not too far, I shouted angrily. Then I felt bad for shouting at him. I said sorry. We Frenched. What happened to Snipe? I growled. You will see, Draco giggled mistressly. He opened a door. Snape and Lumpkin was there. Sirius was pokering them by stating them with a black knife. No, please! Lumpkin bagged as Sirius started to suck his blood. I laughed, statistically. I took some fontons of him and snap being talked. Okay, I know this is men, but think about it, people. They are pedos and the snake tried to rape them. A new Satanist rock 
Has anyone seen Shrek Attack for in laws? We took off. So <laughs> what the fuck does that say? We took some of Snipe's blood. Then Draco and I went back to our rooms. We sat in my gothic black coffin. My clothes were kind of dirty, so I put on a black leather outfit thingy, kind of like the one Sulen has in Underworld. If you haven't heard of it, then fuck you. I put on some black platform high heels. Darko put on Desolation Livers by MCR. Then, we started to take off each other's clothes. I took off his shit, and he had a six pack, lols. We started to make out like in Da Grudge. He put his wetness in my you know what, sexily. I got an orgy. Oh, Draco! Oh my fucking god, Draco! I screamed passively as he got an a reputation. <laughs> I love you, Tano Robi. He whispered sexily, and then we fell asleep. Lol. Chapter 34. Author's note. Shot at the fuck up, preps. Have you even read the story? You are probably all just preps and poses, so fuck you. Thanks to Raven for the help. I woke up into coughing the next day. Draco was gone. I got up and put on a black tight sex address. That was all ripped at the end. There was red corset stuff going up da front and da back. And it came up to my knees. There was a slit in the dress like in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I put on ripped black fishnets and black stilt and boo oots. Suddenly, Saurius cocked on the door. I hopped in it. I know me, he said. Jeez, what are you to come in Professor Sinister's office? Okay, I said in a depressed voice. I would wanted to fuck Draco or maybe listen to MCR or Evan Ersons. I came, anyway. So, what the fuck happened to Sirius and Lupin? I asked Sorius flirtily. I fucking tortured them! He answered in a statistic way. They're in Azkaban now, lol. I laughed evilly. Where are Draco and Vampire? I muttered. They're excused from school today! Sort of mice. Moaned sexily. Right now they are watching the Nightmare Before Xmas. We went into office. Professor Sinister was there. She was wearing a gothic black dress that was all ripped all over it. Kind of like the one Amy Lee wears in this pic. She was drinking some Voltima serum. She took out the pensive and the time torner. Anobi, you will have to answer another session now. Also, I need you to get me to cure being addicted. She said sadly, Good luck, fangs. And then, I jumped into the Princip again. Suddenly I looked around. I was in the Great Hall eating Count Chocula. It was morning. I was sitting next to Satan. On a table was a tall gothic man with long black hair, pale skin, and blue eyes wearing a suit and black Cromverus shoes. He looked just like Charlie Manson. I noticed he was drinking a portent. Hmm. Who's hell? I asked. Ah, that's Professor Slotborn, Satan said. He's the portent teacher. Ebony? Yeah? I asked. Did you know that Baron Manson is playing at Hogsmeade tonight? And they're showing the exercise at the movies before that. Yeah? Well? Want to go to the concert and the movie with me? Chapter 35. Ghost of you. Always note, thanks to Susie for the idea, you rock. Fuck off, preps. Thanks to Raven for the help, you rock, girl. B.S. I'm going to the end of the story really some, so fuck you. Oh yeah, and if you know every gothic names, please tell me, because I need one for Sirius. Thanks. I went to the con men room, thinking of Satan. Suddenly I gasped. Draco was there! I grasped. He locked as hot as ever, wearing black leather pants, a black Lonken Prack t-shirt, and black eyeliner. Draco, what the fuck are you doing? Huh? He asked. Then I remembered. It wasn't Draco. It was Lucian. He still had two arms. Oh, hi, Lucian. I said. I'm Anobi, the new shoon. Lol, we shook hands. Yeah, Satan told me about you. Lucian said. He pined to a group of sexy gothic guys. They were sitting at a corner, cutting. It was Sirius and Vampire's dad and... Snap! All of them were wearing black eyeliner and black good Charlotte band t-shirts. Listen, I'm in a goth band with these guys, he said. We're playing tonight at the Marilyn Manson show as backup. 
Oh, really? I asked. Yeah, he said. We're called XX Black Tears. I play the guitar. Spartacus plays the drums. He said, pointing to him. Snap plays the boss. And Jabez plays the guitar to even four we call him Samero. Of the Samara in the ring. Hey, bastards! I told them they gave me death touch sin. Suddenly, I gasped again. But don't you have a lead singer? I asked. Lucian looked dawn sadly. We used to, but she died. She contemplated suicide by seeing her wrists. Oh my fucking god! That's so fucking sad! I gasped. It's okay, but we need a loose nigger. Samaru said. Well, I said I'm in a bland myself. Really? Oh snap. I couldn't believe it. You used to be gothic. Yeah, we were called Bloody Gothic Rose 666. Do you want to hear me sing? Yeah, said everyone. So the guys took out their guitars. They began to play a song. Get it? Because my guys are so sexy. Gurndy! I walked this empty street on the boulevard of broken dreams. I sang sexily. I don't know the lyrics to that song. <laughs> everyone gasped. Adolfi! Will you join the band? Please! Begged Lucian, Severo, Sirius, and Snap. Um, okay. I shrugged. Are we going to play tonight? Yeah, they said. Okay, I said, but I knew that I had to get a new outfit. I walked outside wondering how I could go forward in time. Suddenly, someone jumped in front of me. It was Morty McFly. He was wearing a black brand t-shirt and black baggy jeans. What the hell are you doing here? I asked. I'll help you go forward in time, Anobi. He said seriously. Then he took out a black tin machine. I went into it and suddenly I was forward in time. Chapter 36. Author's note. I said stop flaming, okay? I bet you are probably all 70 year olds. B.S. Port you sus, you're a prep. Oh, and uh, thanks to Raven for the help. A funny England girl. I looked around in a depressed way. Suddenly I saw Professor Sinister, Lani Mary, Socrates, and Draco, Vampire and Willow were there too. Oh, MFG is serious, I saw you and Samaro and Snip and everyone. I can't believe Snap used to be gothic. Yeah, I know, Sirius said sadly. Oh, hey there, bitch, Professor Trevely said in an emo voice, drinking some Voldemort serum. Hi, fucker, I said. Listen, Satan asked me to go out to a gothic concert or movie, so I need a sexy new outfit for the date. Also, I'm playing in a gothic band, so I need an outfit for that too. Oh, my Satan! Get it, Lois, because she's gothic? Glass bloody Mary! Want to go to Hot Topic to shop for your outfit? Oh my fucking gods, let's have a group cutting session! This said Professor Trevely. I can't fucking wait for that, but we need to get some stuff first. Said Willow. Yeah, we need some potions for Professor Trevely so she won't be addicted to Voltable Serum anymore. And also, some love potion for Anobi. Darko said resultingly. Well, we have potions class now. Willow said, so let's go. We went. Sexily to potions class, but Snap wasn't there. Instead, there was Cornelio Fuck! Hey, where the fuck is Dumbledore? Draco shouted angrily. Shut the fuck up! Shooted Cornelio Fuck. Who's in Asma Gun now? We're Snap and Lupin! He was old and weak, and he has cancer! Now do your work! My friends and I talked angrily. Can you believe Snape used to be gothic? Vampire asked surprisedly. That's it! Cornelio Fox shooted angrily. I'm getting Professor Bridge! He stopped out angrily. My friends and I began talking again. I began to drink some blood with some beer. Suddenly I saw Hagrid in the cupboard. WTF is he doing? I asked. Then I looked at Draco. He was wearing tons of iron and he looked sexier than ever. Suddenly... Hagrid, what the fuck are you doing? He shouted. I looked around. Hagrid was putting something in my glass of blood. Darko and Vampire started to beat him up. Sexily. God, you're such a poser, I shooted at Hagrid. Suddenly I looked at uh, what he was putting into blood. It was... Amnesia Potion. Chapter 37. Orbis note. Okay, everyone, I'm going on vocation on the 1st of July, so I'm either going to end the thing 
Well, updated next week. Thanks. Oh yeah, and perhaps stop leaving my story. Raven, thanks for the help. See you, girl. After vocation. Darko's point of view. Lol. Vampire and I chained Hagrid to the floor. Oh my fucking Satan! Anubi said. She was so hot. Maybe I could use Amnesia Potion to make Satan foil in love with me faster. But you're so sexy and wonderful anyway, Tata, said Vampire. Why would you need it? To make everything go faster, lol, said Anubi. But won't you have to do it with him or anything, will you? I asked jealously. Oh my fucking god, you guys, you are so scary, said Brittany, a fucking prep. Shut the fuck up, said Willow. Okay, well, let's go to Professor Trelawney's room. Draco, Ebony and I went to Professor Sinister's room, but Professor Sinister wasn't there. Instead, Tom Rind was. Oh hi, fuckers, he said. Listen, I got some new cool new clothes. I took out the clothes from the bag. It was a gothic black leather miniskirt that said 666 on the back. Black Stilton boots. Blood red fishnets and a black corset. OMG! Fangs! I said, hugging him in a gothic way. I took the clothes in the bag. Okay, Professor Sinister isn't here. What the fuck should we do? Asked Draco. Suddenly he locked at a sign on the black wall. Oh my fucking Satan! I screamed as I read it. On it, it said, everyone, Professor Sinister is away. She is too gothic. She is in Azkabian now. Garcia shall be taught by Dumbledore, who is back, but he shall not be principal for now. Sincerely, Professor Rumbridge. OMFG! I shot it angrily. How could they do that? Suddenly, Dumbledore came. What the hell are you doing in my office? He began to shoot angrily. Suddenly, I saw Monty McFly back as a time machine. I jumped seductively into it, leaving Draco and Vampire. Suddenly, I was back in time. I looked around. It was Professor Slopborn's office. I sneaked around. Suddenly, I saw that amnesia potion on his desk. It was black with blood red pentagrams in it. It was the shape of a cross. I put it in my pocket. Suddenly, the door opened. It was Professor Slotgorn. Oh my god, what are you doing, fucker? He shooted angrily. I don't know what the fuck are you doing. I shoot it angrily. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just shooting around because I thought it was class. You said, finally hoping he couldn't see the potion in your pocket. Oh, okay. You can go now, said Professor Slutborn. You went to the con men room after putting on my clothes. Silas, Samaru, and Snap were there. Practicing vampires will never hurt you. By MCR. Oh, hi, you guys. I said seductively. Where's Satan? Oh, he's coming! Said Sirius. By the way, you can call me Hades now! <laughs> Suddenly, Satan came. He was wearing a smexier black leather Jackson, black Congress shoes, a slipknot t-shirt, and a black tie. Okay, I will see you guys at the concert. I said. And then I went with Satan. Chapter 38. Author's note. What does everyone think if I end the story and then I add some more to it after vocation? Oh yeah, and prep stop flaming. If you don't like the story, then take my quiz, okay? Then you will see if you're gothic or not. <laughs> Satan and I walked to his car. It was a black car with pentagrams all over it. On the license plate it said 666. Just like Draco's car. I went in it. Seductively. Stan started to drive it. We talked about Satanism. Lols, he was named after Satan. Nothing, music, and being gothic. Oh my Satan! Gerard is so fucking hot! Volosport agreed and we smoked some weed. Cause my guys are hot, they are so sensitive, I love them. Lols goes and fucks a bye guy. Lol, I totally decided not to commit suicide when I heard Elena. I said in a flirty voice. Hey, Satan, do you know the cure for when people are addicted to Baltimore Serum? Well, he thought, I think you have to drink some vampire blood. Suddenly, Voldemort parked a car behind a black movie theatre. Satan and I walked outside. We went to the movie theatre where they were showing The Exorcist. In it, a boy and a girl were doing it. 
Suddenly a serial killer came, lol. Satan and I laughed at the blood because we're sadists. While Satan was watching the movie, I had an idea. I took Satan's gothic black nightmare before Christmas cigar sexily from his pocket and put some amnesia potion in it. I put it back in his black Emile the Strange bag. Satan turned around and started to smoke it. Black clouds with red pentagrams and M started to fly around everywhere. OMFG! Satan said, jumping up. I gasped because I was afraid he'd noticed. Anobi, guess what? I knew that the amnesia had worked. Amnesia potion has not been invented yet, so it will not work, he said. Too bad, because I wanted to use some on you. Cool! I raised my eyes suggestively. And then, he took off my clothes sexily, and we started to make out. I took off his shit. He had six pack, just like Gerard Way! We Frenched. Uh, excuse me, but are you going to leave? Shooted the lady behind us. He was a prep. Fuck you, I said. Suddenly, I attacked her, sucking all her blood. No! She screamed. All the preps in the theater screamed, but everyone else crapped, because Satan and I looked so cute together. Satan and I started to walk outside. Oh my god! How did you do that? Voldemort asked in a turned on voice. I'm a vampire, I said as we went into the car. Yeah, seriously, I said, drinking some beer. Satan started to drive to Dakar. I smelled happily. It's too bad we didn't get to see the rest of the movie, don't you think? Yeah, I said, as we cursed passively. Satan parked in a black driveway next to the place where Drake and I had watched GC for the first time. We went inside where Marilyn Manson was playing, and started a mosh. Lol. Anti-people, now you've gone too far, Jesus Christ Superstar! Screamed Marlin on the stage. We did the devil fingers. I started to dance really close to Satan. He was so shrexy. He looked at me all emo with his gothic red eyes, and he looked exactly like Mikey Way. I almost got an organism. Suddenly, Marilyn Manson stopped singing. I would like to present X Black Tears, he said. I ran on stage. Lucian, Samero, Snap, and Hades were there. They started to play their instillments. I got on the stag. Well, if you wanted honesty, that's all you had to say, I sang. I don't own the lyrics to that song. I, my voice sounded like a pentagram between Amy Lee and a girl version of Gerard Way. Everyone clapped. Satan got an eruption. I'm not okay, I sang finally. Suddenly, Lucian started playing the song, wrote by Mistak. Oh my fucking god, yielded James. What the fuck? Whoops, I'm sorry, said Lucian. You're a fucking asshole! James shouted angrily. You guys are such preps, Snap said. Come on, it was a mistake. Yeah, it's not his fault, said Sirius. No, he ruined the fucking song, yelled Samaro. You guys, stop! I shooted angrily, but it was too late. They all began to fight. Sully Samaro took out his knife. Oh my fucking god, no! Shouted Lucian, but it was too late because... James tried to shoot off his arm. And then, I jumped sexily in front of the bullet. No! You did everyone, but it was too late. Sadly, everyone went black. Chapter 39. I am a trolling genius, lols. Disclaimer. I do not own the HP series, and I am not the real XXX. Bloody wrist 666 XXX. All this note. I am an extremely immature, pathetic idiot girl, I know. At a boredom, I cracked this scar's pansy for fun. And it took less than eight minutes to do it too. And we'll probably get in a shitload of trouble. Which I probably deserve, because I'm being a troll right now. Nah. And I present to you my crappy part in this story. And take note, I haven't even finished reading this fic yet. But instead, skip over to Skim Chapter 38. Flame. Laugh. Do whatever you want. Preps. I, the American retail-wearing British vampire Sue coughed up blood. Satan kneeled down beside me. No! Don't die. I gave him a rueful smile. I'm sorry. It's something I had to do to fulfill my duty as the noble gothic Mary Sue. Satan sobbed. I love you, Nobi. I love you too, Hal. I'll see you in hell, I mumbled, 
already finding my surroundings fading to black. Well, Lolly, Mary Smith, suddenly popped into the room for no apparent reason. She frowned when she realised the room was oddly quiet, but at the sight of Everly's lifeless body, she screamed. Her face became pale with horror. She screamed for the healers, Dumbledore, McGoogle, and every single gothic person she could think of. Suddenly, a glow started to surround the body of Ebony. Everyone stared in shock. Her body started to lift ever so slowly, and then, to everyone's shock, it started to incinerate. When everyone realised what was happening, they rushed over to try and rescue the body, but it was too late. The Sioux became nothing more than a pile of ashes. A loud resounding of everyone bellowing, No! filled the room. A flash of white light from the ashes then started to bounce around the room. Everyone, cowered in fear and were temporarily blinded. When it was over, things changed. All the silly gothic clothes dropped from everyone's bodies. All of a note, I will refuse to explain how the hell that happened. And in their place, clothes the characters would normally wear in canon appeared on their bodies. When everyone got over the shock of becoming free of the gothic power, everybody cheered. Everybody started saying, Ding Dong, the Sue is dead. Well, that is, until all the HP characters realised the true implications of becoming more canon-like again. All the characters who were supposed to be dead fell to the floor, their bodies cold and lifeless. Harry and Voldemort started duelling. On the left side of the two, the battle of the light side and the dark side were reaching the climax. And because the replacement dwarf also likes to screw away with cannon, Draco and Hermione flipped the scene and got married. Meanwhile, down in hell, Everly shed a single tear because of her current situation. A situation that would live on for all eternity, or at least until the end of fanfiction time. She lost it all, but she knew she had to remain strong. Nothing would ever break her down. She looked down over her pale body and frowned. Where are my emo clothes? She asked herself in confusion. And then it occurred to her. For her shirt, she was wearing a bright pink polo with a little seagull on the right or left. I can't remember, sighed. Below that, she was wearing a denim miniskirt with a destroyed look on it. Paired underneath that skirt were leggings with a little moose at the bottom. And then Ebony realised on her shoulder, she was carrying a pretty bag with an eagle on it that said, Live your life, written all over the bag. Ebony suppressed the urge to scream. Here she was, decked out in clothes prepped to the extreme, wearing stuff like Abercrombie and Finch, American Eagle, and Hollister. Panicked, Ebony hastily tried to take off the Hollister polo, but underneath it there was another Hollister polo underneath. Ebony frowned and looked under her shirt. All she saw was a bra underneath. Dare I point out it's from the airy line of Eberwood, American Eagle. Ebony tried to remove the shirt again, but to her frustration, there was yet another polo to replace it. This is unlogical and does not make any sense, Ebony bellowed out to the air. She failed to see the irony in her statement, how hypocritical her words were, seeing as she was practically calling the kettle black here. Ebony slit her wrists and mumbled to herself, Oh my god. End. Crap fig. Author's note. Oh yeah, if you want to see the original content this chick had planned for this chapter, I accessed it through the document manager thingy, which I copied and pasted, so you can read it here. Well gee, cheers. Author's note! Shut the fuck up, Revs, get a life. You suck. Oh, and from now on, it'll be invocation in England until, like, August, so I won't be able to update for a while, lols. Thanks to everyone who recommended, expect the preps who flamed, fuck you. MCR rules, 666. I woke up in the Norse's orifice on a special gothic coffin. Hagrid was in the bed opposite me in a comma, cause Vampire Draco had beat him up. Mr. Norris was cleaning the room. Oh my Satan, what happened? I screamed. Suddenly, Volok Samort came. He looked less mean than usual. Get the fuck out, you fucking bastard! I yelled it. Thou have not killed a vampire yet, he said angrily. Suddenly he started to cry tears of blood, all selective. Voldemort! OMFG, what's wrong? I asked. Suddenly, Lucian, Professor Sinister, and Sirius came. Bloody Mary and Vampire were with them. Everyone was holding black boxes. Voldemort 
This I heard. Oh my FG, Ebony, you're alive! Screamed Vampire. I hugged him and Bloody Mary. What the fuck happened? I asked them. Oh my Satan! Am I, like, dead now? I gasped. And Obi, you're always shot! Said Sirius. But the ballet could not kill you since you were from another time. But thanks anyway, said Lucian, holding Uti's arm. I gasped. He had two arms. Oh, gee, I can't believe Vampire's dad shot you. I gasped. Well, to be honest, Snape was possessed by Snap back then, <laughs> said James. Yeah, he was a spy, Sirius said Sally. He really was a deaf dealer. And he was such a fucking poser, too, said Lucian. He didn't even really know who GC were until I told him. Well, anyway, everyone tarted to give me presents. I was opening a black box with red 666s. There was a DVD of Corpse Bride in it, on it when I gasped. Oh. Mr. Norris looked up angrily, because he heard goths. Hey, has anyone fucking seen Draco? I asked. Gothicali? Oh, Draco told me he would be watching Hose of Works, said Professor Trevely. He doesn't know you, Dad, you're better. Anyway, Danor said you could get up. Come on. I got up suicidally. Lucian, Sirius, and Professor Sinister left. I was wearing a black leather nightgun. Under that, I held a sexy black leather bra trimmed with black lace with a matching thong that said Gothic Girl on the butt. And sexy fishnets that kind of hooked onto my thong. If you don't get that idea, message me, I'll tell you. I put on a black fishnet top under a black MCR t-shirt, a black leather mini with black lace and congress shoes. I left the hospital scenes with Blarney Mary, Willow, and Vampire. OMFG, let's celebrate, gasped Willow. We can go see Hose of Wax with Draco, giggled Vampire. Yes, let's listen to GC and cut ourselves 666 at the Miney. We opened a common room door sexily, and then I gasped. Draco was in there doing it with Snape. He was wearing a black t shirt with 666 on the front and baggy jeans. You fucking prep! We all yielded angrily. Yeah, you betrayed us! Shooted Vampire angrily as he took out his black gun. No, you don't understand! Screamed Draco Sally as he took his thingy out of Snape's. No shit, you fucking suck, you preppy bastard! Said Willow, trying to attack him. You rock, girl. I ran suicidally to my room. I sexily took a stake out. Anobi, no! Screamed Draco. But it was too late. I had slipped my wrist with it. Everything suddenly went black again. Sincerely. An anon author who will certainly not reveal her identity because she's a coward. AKA just a troll with rocks of brains. Chapter 40. Lol. Someone has taken my account over. The idiot's note, well, this was in the dock area. Might as well let the whole world see what the real Tara wanted to show us. Have a nice day. Always note. Shut the fuck up, preps. Get alive. You suck. Oh, and from now on, I'll be on vocation in England till like August, so. I won't be able to update for a while, lols. Thanks to everyone who reviewed, except the preps who flamed, fuck you, MCR rules, 666. I woke up into Norse's orifice on a special coffin coffin. Hergrew was in the bed opposite me in a coma because Vampire and Draco had bet him up. Mr. Norris was cleaning the room. Oh my Satan, what happened? I screamed. Suddenly, Vloxamort came. He looked less mean than usual. Get the fuck out, you fucking bastard! I hooted. They all have not killed a vampire yet, he said angrily. Suddenly he started to cry tears of blood, all selective. Voldemort, OFG, what's wrong? I asked. Suddenly, Lucian, Professor Sinister, and Sirius came. Bolani, Mary, and Vampire were with them. Everyone was holding black boxes. Voldemort it disappeared. Oh my god, Ebony, you're alive! Screamed Vampire. I hugged him, and bloody Mary. What the fuck happened? I asked them. Oh my Satan! Am I, like, dead now? I gasped. And nobody, you're overshot! Said Sirius. But the ballet could not kill you since you were from another time! 
But thanks anyway, said Lucian, holding Uta's arm. I gasped. He had two arms! OMG, I can't believe Vampire's dad shot you. I gasped. Well, to be honest, Snap was posed by Snap back then, said James. Yeah, he was a spy, Sirius said sadly. He really was a death dealer. And he was such a fucking poser too, said Lucian. He, he didn't even really know who Gushaul were until I told him. Well anyway, everyone started to give me presents. I was opening a black box with red 666s. There was a DVD of Corpse Briding It on it when I gasped. Mr. Norris looked up angrily because he hated goths. Hey, has anyone fucking seen Draco? I asked gothically. No, Draco told me he would be watching House of Works, said Professor Trevely. He doesn't know that you're better. Anyway, the North said you could get up. Come on! I got up, suicidally. Lucian, Sirius, and Professor Sinister left. I was wearing a black leather night gun. Under that, I had on a sexy black leather bra, trimmed with black lace, with a matching thorn that said Gothic Girl on the butt, and sexy fishnets that kind of hooked onto my thorn. If you don't get the idea, message me. I'll tell you. I put on a black fishnet top under a black MCR t-shirt, a black leather mini with black lace and Congress shoes. I left the hops but all his wings with Bloody Mary, Willow, and Vampire. OMG, let's celebrate! gasped Willow. We can go see House of Wax with Draco! giggled Vampire. Let's go listen to GC and cut ourselves 666, said Hermione. We opened a common door room and sexily and den. I gasped. Draco was in there doing it with Snap. He was wearing a black t-shirt with 666 on the front and baggy jeans. You fucking prep! We all yielded angrily. Yeah, you betrayed us! Shooted Vampire angrily as he took out his black gun. No, you don't understand! Screamed Drago sadly as he took his thingy out of Snape's. No shit, you fucking suck, you preppy bastard! Said Willow, trying to attack him. You rock girl. I ran suicidally to my room. I sexily took a stake out. Enobi, no! Screamed Draco, but it was too late. I had slipped my wrist with it. Everything suddenly went black again. It is note, I know, the terrible, but then again, this wouldn't be called the worst fanfic ever if not for the fact that the writing stands meets the level of a day old fetus. Chapter 41. Orbis note, to everyone who keeps flaming this, get as life. I bet you probably aren't who, who Mid Jeroway is, you're probably all preps and posers. New way some hacked into my account in November, and they put up my last chapter, but now there is a new one. I'm sorry for not updating G for a while, but I've been really busy. I've been trying to finish the story before the new movie comes out. I'm going on vacation for a month. I won't be back until about two weeks. OMFG Draco is so hot in all the picks for the new movie. I wanted them to post a cameo by Jared Waylow, he has played Draco. If you flame, I'll slip my wrists. Raven, you rock girl. Have fun in England. When I woke up, I was in a strange room. I looked around. I was wearing the same outfit I had when is performed with X Black X Tears X. I looked around, confusedly. It was the Norse's office, but it looked different. On the wall was a pic of Marilyn Manson. Just imagine that. He was an 80s gothic band too, okay? Because he was more old than Panic. At the disco or MCR. There was also a gothic black Beatles calendar with a picture of the Beatles wearing eyeliner and black gloves. On it it said, 1980. OMFG, I'm back in Tim again! I screamed loudly. Suddenly, Satan, this is actually Voldemort for photo references, Voldemort was wearing a black leather Jackson, black tight jeans, and a fishnet pants. He looked so sexy, I almost had an orgy! OFG Anobi, are you okay? He asked gothically. Yeah, I'm okay for your information, I snapped sexily. OMFG, am I dead? Because I remembered I had jumped in front of the bullet from James's gun. I also remember seeing Draco do it with Snape. I guessed that was when I had slipped my wrists. I had went back in Tim instead of dying. I know I could go forward in time if I found a time tone or that Tim machine. No, you're not dead. Satan reassured suicidally as he smoked a cigarette sexily, and smoke came all of his face. 
You're a vampire, so you can't die from a bullet. Come on, let's go see how Harry's dad is doing. I know that the real reason I didn't die from the bullet was because I was just on the future. WTF, James almost shot Lucius, I said indignantly. I knew that James had really been possessed, but I didn't want him to know. I knew. Yeah, I knew he had a headache, but he was under a lot of stress. Satan reasoned evilly. I guess that's okay, I said, because James had really shot Lucian. Also, I know that Lucian would now have gotten two arms instead of one. I walked seductively outside with Satan. Suddenly, I saw a totally sexy gothic bi guy. He had a bleached blonde hair with black streaks up to his ears, and he was wearing gothic black eyeliner. Our black Green Day shirt. It showed Billy Joel with blonde hair since it was the 80s, black Congress shoes, and black baggy pants. He walked in all sexily, like Gerard Way in the video for I Don't Free You Like I Did Yesterday, and you can see a black tear on his face, like the woman in the video. Hey, he said all quietly and gothically. Who the fuck is that? I asked angrily, because I did not know him. This is Hedwig, said Voldemort. He used to be in X Black X Tier X2, but he had to drop out because he broke his arm. Hey, Hedwig, I said seductively, even though I was not trying to be. Lo hi, you know be, he answered, but then he ran away because he had hair of magical creature. He was humming Welcome to the Black Pratt under his breath. I know that is not an 80s, but pretend it is, okay? Bye, I said all sexily. That was Hedwig. He used to be my boyfriend, but we broke up. Satan said sadly, looking at his black nails. Oh, MFG, I can get you back together, I said, fingering something I didn't know was in my pocket. A black cute, as what we aim for, studio iPod, that I can take videos with. Does anyone else know about them? They kiss ass. Okay, you can get four about your class for now, Hedwig. I'm going to show you something great. I led them to the Great Hall. Come on, you guys! Lucian, James, Sirius, and Snake were in all in the Great Hall. Lucian wouldn't talk with James because he had tried to shoot him. Go fuck yourself, you fucking douche! He shouted at him. Draco is never going to be friends with Vampire now. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Samero, Snape agreed. But I knew he was lying because it had been his fault James had almost shot Lucian. Be quiet, you guys, I said sexily. My plan was working out great. Now I could make Voldemort good without doing it with him. Now Vampire's dad would never die. And, okay, Satan and Hedwig, you guys can start making out, I said, and I started to film them with the iPod. Cool, said Sirius, as Voldemort and Hedwig started to make out sexily. We watched as they started to take off each of his clothes off sexily. Samaro, Sirius, Snake, and Lucian all watched because they were probably by. I knew Snape was by. Oh my fucking god! Voldemort! Voldemort! Screamed Hedwig as his glock touched Voldemort's. But suddenly everything stopped as the door opened and in came Dumbledore and Mr. Norris! Chapter 42 the Black Parade. Always note. Oh my god, the new book is coming out really soon, and I can't wait. I think that Snap will be really the same person as Volksamort, because they are both half blood. So that would explain why he killed Dumbledore and he hated Harry. And then Harry will have committed suicide, so Voldemort would die, because he really he will really be a Horcrux. Oh my god, I hope Draco and Harry get together. That would be so schmexy, wouldn't it? If they don't. And JKR is homophobic! <laughs> Thanks for the help with facts. Medusa, you rock. I sat depressingly in Dumbledore's office with Hedwig, Satan, James, Sirius, Snap, and Lucian. Dumbledore was sitting in front of us cruelly. He looked more young than he had in the future. He had taken the iPod away and was now listening to a shitty Aaron Lafrange song. What the hell is this anyway? He cackled meanly. I hoped he didn't find out. That I was from another time. Whatever you do, don't blame Ibadu, you jerk. 
Satan said. Yeah, seriously! She was trying to get Satan and Hemic back together! Sirius said, deviantly. Be quiet, you Satanists! Dumbledore cockled. If you're lucky, I'll probably send you all to Azkaban! That will teach you to copulate into Great Hall! He changed the song into iPod to a NSYNC song. Suddenly, I noticed something strong about the iPod. It was slowly chonging. Dumbledore didn't notice. You fucking poser, I muttered. I bet you never even heard of JC, James said. No, I knew what the iPod was chanting into. Morty McFly's time machine! Shut up, James, Draco's dad shouted. Yeah, shut up, Snape said, preppily. No, you shut up, Dumbledore, said Tom. I've had enough of you Satanists in my school, shouted Dumbledore sporadically. Suddenly, I grabbed the iPod from him. Everyone, jump in before it's too late. I jumped into it, but only one other person jumped in. It was Satan. You dunderheads! screamed Dumbledore wisely as we went. I looked around. I was in the Slytherin common room with Satan. I was wearing a black plate miniskirt with hot pink fishnets, a sexy black MCR corset, and black stiletto boots with pink pentagrams on them. My earrings were Blake Satanist Sins, and my raven hair was all around me to my mid black. Hey, cool, where is this? He asked in an emo voice. This is the future. Dumbledore's iPod that he tried to take him away from me was really also a tin machine, I told him. Cool. What's an eye patch? He whimpered. It's something you use to listen to music, I yacked. Oh, MFG, cool. Wait, what's a four letter word for dirt? He asked in his saxa voice. Um, I guess sand, I laid confusingly. Yeah, I was trying to make sure you were still the same person. He triumphantly giggled. Suddenly, some of my friends walked in. Oh, you're fucking alive! Said Ginny, wearing a black leather jacket, black packy pants, and a gothic black from first to last shirt. I explained to her while I was alive. Kawaii, ya child bitch! Said Willow. She was wearing a black corset showing off her boobs, with lace all around it and red stripes on it. With it, she was wearing a black leather mini skirt, big black boots, white foundation, a black eyeliner, red eyeshadow, and black lipstick. Hey, motherfucker! said Diabolo with his red hair. He was wearing a black PATD t shirt and black baggy pants. Hey, who's that, Nobby? Blarney Mary questioned as she walked in wearing a black t shirt with a red pentagram on it with lace at the bottom, black leather pants with a black lace. And black stilettos! Oh, it's Satan! I told her, and she nodded, knowing the truth. Suddenly, Satan started to cry. Are you okay, Satan? We asked concernedly. Oh my god, you're from the future! What if you don't like me anymore because we're from different times? He asked. No, I still like you, I said sexily to him. Okay, he said reassuringly. I let him listen to Teenagers by MCR on my iPod while I was about to go outside to find out some things. I gave Diabolo a signal to keep Satan occupied. Satan fell asleep. I took the iPod. I was about to walk outside. Professor Sinister ran in. She was wearing a gothic black mini dress with depressing black stripes, white and black striped tights, and rest converse shoes. She was wearing lots of black eyeliner. Oh my fucking god, where's Draco? How did Snap get back here? I thought he was in Azerbaijan! I asked sadly. Kenobi, I was so worried about you, but I know you can't fucking die because you're a vampire. Snape came back because that girl Brittany freed him. I never liked her, she was a bad student. Trevorly said reassuringly. That bitch! Did she also free Hagarit and Lupin? I shouted angrily. I hated Brittany because she was a fucking prep. Yes, they are on the loose at the school. Dumbledore is back and Colina is on his way to help everyone. Tell everyone you see to lock themselves in the combat room. Trevely said worryingly. Okay, but where's Draco? How come he was doing it with Snap? I don't know why, but 
I know he always tried to commit suicide after he saw you almost kill yourself, she said. OMG, that's terrible, I gasped. Satan was still asleep, so he couldn't tell what was going on. Then I said, listen everyone, I have something important to do. In our everyone stay. With that, I ran out. Good luck, Tara, everyone cried. I ran sexily down the stairs into the great hall where the portraits around looked at me scaredly. There was hardly anyone else in the stairs and there was an atmosphere of horror. On the way, I saw Brittany laughing on the stairs. She was wearing a slutty pink shirt with flowers on it, a blue jean skirt, Abercrombie and pink stilettos. She looked just like a pentagram of those fucking preps, Hilary Duff and Lindsay Lohan. You fucking bitch! I screamed angrily. No, you're totally a bitch. Now Voldemort would like totally kill you. She laughed. Cushiosius! I shouted selectively, pomfocating my black wand, as she started screaming because she was being tortured and I laughed sadistically. No, help me, please! Brittany screamed terrifiedly. I put up my middle finger at her. In her hand I saw the video camera Snape and Lumpkin had used to take the video of me. I put the tape of Voldemort doing it with Hedwig onto it. Then I continued to round down the stairs with the camera. When I had reached the Great Hall I saw Vampire Potter. OMG! Vampiria! I yielded. We hugged each other utter happily. He looked at me with his gothic red eyes and spiky black hair. Around them were black eyeliner and eyeshadow. He was wearing a black leather jackson, leather pants, a Panic at the Disco concert shirt, and his black Congress shoes. He looked more like Joel from Good Charlotte than ever. Did you hear the song, Da River? It rocks! I was so worried you died, moaned Vampire. I know, but I'm a vampire, lol. When I woke up, I was back in 1980, so Nitway, I brought a Voldemort from where he was young with me. Where's Draco? I asked, sprightingly. Draco? You mean that fucking poser who betrayed you? Vampire snarkled with anger in his sexy voice. I know, but we have to find him, I said smartly. I'll do it then, Harry said angstily. Okay, I agreed. Suddenly, all the lights in the room went out, and then the dork Mark appeared. Oh, my fucking Satan, Harry shouted. I think Voldemort has arrived, I said anxiously. Fuck! I have to find Draco! I guess we should separate! Okay! Vampire said disappearingly. Sadly, I ran into the Great Hall. Chapter 43 I think after this I will have about two or three more chapters. Thanks to all my reviewers, not Daz Flamers. If you flame this story, then you suck. If you flame, then fuck you. I walked sexily into the Great Hall. It was empty except for one person. Draco was there! He sat in their bloody bloom in his black 666 t-shirt and his blaggy black pants. He had slit his wrists? I felt mad at him for having sex with Snape, but I felt sorry for him. He looked just like Jared Way with his red eyes and his pale white face. Draco! Are you okay? I asked. I'm not okay! He screamed depressingly. I thought of the MCR song and I got even more depressed because that song always makes me cry. I gave him a pot cigarette and he started to smoke it. Oh, Draco, why did you do it with that fucking bastard Snape? I asked tearfully. Why? Draco began to say, but suddenly Lupin and Mr. Norris appeared into the room. They didn't see us. I'm so glad we, me and Snape, were freed, said Lupin. Damn, this job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking students. Mr. Norris agreed. Pop Adelum. I yielded angrily, pointing my wand at them. No. Lupin shouted as chains came on him. Mr. Norris ran away. You fucking perv! I said, laughing with depths of evil and desperate listeners in my voice. Now you have to tell us where Voldemort is. I'm going to torture you. I don't know where he is, said Lupin. Suddenly, Satan and Vampire ran into the room. Vampire didn't know who Satan really was. Oh, my Satan! We were so worried about you guys! Vampire said. I looked sexily at Draco with his gothic red eyes with contacts, black t-shirt that said 666 on it, and pale skin, like Gerald Way. Vampire with sexy black hair and red eyes just like Frankie Hero, and Satan looked just like Brendan Uri then. I selectively took the caramel from my pocket, and then 
I began fetching Draco sexily. Lupin gasped. Draco began to take all of his clothes off. I could see his white sex back. Then Vampire took his own clothes off too. We all began making out together sexily. I took off my black leather bra, my black lace thong, and the rest of my clothes. Everyone took their glocks out. Except for me, I'm a girl, lol. Oh my Satan! Draco! I screamed as he put his hardness in my thingy, then he did the same thing to Harry. I began making out with Satan and he joined in. Oh, a mess! cried Vampire. Oh, Vampire! Vampire! I screamed, screamed. Oh, Satan! yelled Harry and Player Jaw. Lupin was in shock. We took turns doing torture curses on him, because we were all sadists. Suddenly, a big black car that said 666 on the license plate flew straight through to windows. And Snape was in it! Chapter 44 Author's Note Well, I have nothing to say, but everyone stop glaring, okay? If any gothic people are reading this, then you rock. Oh my god, I still can't wait forward to the movie. Tom Flatten is so hot, lol. I hope Harry will become gothic, because my friend told me he is really emo in this book. OMFG, I'm leaving W pretty soon. Can't wait. This will probably be the last chapter, until I come back. That's my car! Shooted Draco angrily, but suddenly it was revealed who was in the car. It was... Snape! I shall free you, Lupin, but first you must help me kill these idiotic Donderheads. He said coolly from the car as it flew, circumcising above us. Ebony Darkness Dimension Raven Way must be killed, then the Dark Lord shall never die. You fucking prep! yelled Draco. Then he looked at me sadly. I forgot to tell you, Ebony. Snape made me do it with him. I didn't really have sex, but he's a rapist. We all put on our clothes on quickly, except Satan. We were so scared, but Satan didn't change. Instead, he changed into a man with red eyes, no nose, a grey robe and white skin. He had changed into Voldemort. I knew who thou were all along. He cackled deeply and sarcastically at me. Now I shall kill thee all. Thunder came in the room. No, please don't kill us, pleaded Vampire. Suddenly Willow, Bloody Mary, Diabolo, Ginny, Dracula, Fred and Gorge, Hagrid, McGonagall, Duff, Lildor, Sirius and Lucian all ran in. What is the meaning of this? Dumbledore asked all angrily. And Voldemort looked away because Dumbledore is the only wizard he is scared of. He did a spell and suddenly his broomstick came to him, sexily. Voxamort flew above the roof evilly on his broomstick. Oh my goth! Slugborn gossiped. Get it, because I'm gothic? The Dark Lord shall kill you all. Then you must submit to him. Snape ejaculated menacingly. You fucking prairie fogs! Sirius shouted angrily. I knew a four letter word for dirt. Crustaceous! Screamed Harry, but a spark from his wand only hit Draco's car. It fell down. Snap quickly crawled out of it and picked up the video camera. Oh my fucking god! I cried. Because the video of me in the bathroom, the video of me donning it with Draco, and the video of Satan doing it with. If you kill me, then these videos will be shown to everyone in the skull. Then you can be just like that gothic girl, Paris Hilton. He laughed meaningly. No! I screamed. FYI, I have the picture of you doing it with Lupin. What is she talking about? Lubin slept as he sat in chains. I thought too. She's going to show everyone the picture. Harry shouted angrily. Shut up. Lubkin roared. Foolish ignorances. Yielded Voldemort from his boomstick. Thou shall all die soon. Think again, you fucking muggle poser. Harry yelled, and then he and Diabolo and Neville both took out black guns. But Voldemort took out his own one. You guys are in a Latin standoff! I shouted disparagedly. Ever Neville's one! cried Voldemort, and suddenly Neville's wind was in his hands. Now, I shall call the all and Ebony, you will die. His made lightning come over the place. Sables, Ebony! Double Dark cried. I cried sexily. I just wanted to go to the conmen room and slip my wrist with my friends, but we were shark attack free and saw two and do it with Draco, but I knew I had to do something more impotent. 
Abra! Kadabra! I shoot it. Well, that's it. Thank fuck. Jesus Christ. Ooh. My immortal in one sitting. Beat that, people. <laughs> oh my god. I probably need to down, down a bottle of vodka after this. Jesus Christ. <sighs> yeah, I'm leaving this in. Okay, so... If you're still with me, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to post a couple of bloopers after this. So you can go off on a happy note. So don't go away yet. Oh my fucking god. Like, the final recording of this is probably going to be significantly reduced. But um, I'm gonna, I've got to edit it out. I mean, the final video is like... God, where am I? Yeah, um, four hours. Jesus. Oh my god, four hours in one sitting. Uh, but um, I guess I just want to take the opportunity because I don't do it that often. Um, I'm recording this um, the 29th of March, so this will be severely delayed. This is going up in May. But thank you so much for subscribing um, and watching the videos and joining the Discord and sending me all your lovely comments because that keeps me going. It kept me going to do this, Jesus. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Um, and there is no way in hell if YouTube is going to monetize this. They're probably going to can my channel. So um, if you want to help contribute to my um, excessive alcoholism and the shrink and the shrink and the psychologist I'm probably going to need after recording this, then Patreon links are in the description. And you know, I mean, this is a uh, lie, so you can do super chat as well. Anyway, enough shilling. Have some bloopers. Yeah, I guess I lied. I went to the girl's dorm and brushed my teeth and my hair and changed into a low-cut Black Thor limp dress. <laughs> God damn, I'm doing a lot of fucking cross-dressing today. <coughs> my name is Harry Potter, although most call... <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell! I waved to Vampire. Dark misery was in his depressed eyes. I guess he was jealous of me that I was going out with Draco. Anyway, I went to ex- <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> no, you fucking idiot! I shouted. You probably have AIDS anyway! <laughs> I'm a slut, but I'm really not. We were singing a cover of Helena, and at the end of the song, I suddenly burst into tears. Ebony, are you okay? Bloody Mary asked in a concerned voice. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. What am I doing? Chapter 11. Office note. I said stop flaming you, perhaps. See if this chapter is stupid. It is really with serious issues. <laughs> what the fuck does this say? <laughs> Everybody! Has been reversed, someone has! Yeah! He shouted, looking at his tape. <laughs> we ran to where Voldemort was. It turns out that Voldemort wasn't there. Instead, the fat guy who killed Segre was. <laughs> What? Cause we, you know, he could get at it uncomfortably. Cause guys don't like to talk about, you know what? Yeah, cause we. <laughs> God damn it! Oh my fucking God, Ebony, you gonna get him back in the hole now? Chapter seventeen. Office note, I said, stop flaming, yes, sir. <laughs> God 
damn it. My flatmates are gonna fucking kill me. Snape and Lupin were in the middle of the empty hallway doing it. And Dolby was watching! <laughs> I glared at Dumbledore. Look, mug of fire. <laughs> Everyone was proud of me, but I just wanted to talk to Draco. They were cheesing my name. <laughs> he pulled out his pants. I gasped. There was a dork mark on his you know what. <laughs> Why did I need that in my mind? <laughs> he was wearing long black hair, kind of like Mikey Way, only black. He had great eyes like Billy Joe Armstrong and pale wit hair. He was wearing a black ripped off suit with Vans. It was Tom Bombadil! <laughs> what? <clears throat> Chapter 32. Author's note. I said. Lord of the Rings, are you kidding me? <laughs> Suddenly, someone jumped in front of me. It was Morty McFly. He was wearing a black bland t-shirt and black baggy jeans. What the hell are you doing here? I asked. I will help you go forward in time, and over he, he said, seriously. <laughs> Step on! <laughs> God, where's Draco? How did Snap get back here? I thought he was an Azkaban- Azkaban! Are you shitting me? This has to be a troll. This has to be a fucking troll. <laughs> <laughs>